Okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, what I call like a street dance roots, uh, where dancers come on and tell us about their, their story about uh, their experience with, with dance and where they started, and what's important to them about it, how they enjoyed it, and what it's done for them lately <laughs> or, or not. Um, so, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, uh, thank you guys for, for being here, each and every one of you, and thank you uh, Facebook people for tuning in uh, every week. I appreciate it. And um, my name is Alpha Anderson. And I'm going to introduce uh, everyone to you, starting at the bottom that I could see. Um, everyone knows who he is. I didn't get a chance to put like a, like you know, like a, a reel on him uh, because of uh, certain reasons. <laughs> but his name is Charles Washington, and uh, he's famously known for Soul Train. But he was a uh, uh, part of the Captain Crunch and the Funky Bunch dance group back in the day, which uh, most of us have heard about uh, during our time of dancing, you know, so, so he was well known before he went on Soul Train, but uh, he, and that's him down to the bottom. If you could raise your hand so they would know who you are. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, up, up to the very top, we have Andrew. Um, and pronounce your last name, is, is it? Uh, Ramsey. Ramsey, just, okay, like M and Ramsey, like our, our Ramsey, right, to Casper? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, he's from uh, Philadelphia, um, and uh, he's uh, in a group called Hood Lockers. Uh, they they're um, they're dancing now to like put back together what the original uh, style was, and and um, and the, that feel of the streetness of locking, and uh, and I, I didn't know him before I started doing this, but he. He um, sent me a message, and that he wanted to like you know um, say something about how he felt about dance. So I, I told him as soon as I got a chance, I was going to do that, and I and I did not forget him. So uh, here he is, and he's going to tell you all about himself. Okay, and then we have Casper Jerome candidate, <laughs> and, and he's going to tell you all about himself. Um, I've been knowing. Casper, uh, you know, like uh, since he was probably like 15, maybe? 15, 14. yep, I was 15. Yeah, uh, I, I, I felt like I used to have a, a after school program. Pretty much. There <laughs> <laughs> was Casper and Cooley and Stephen and Landon at my house every day after school. <laughs> they would be there. I, I know their families, I know, you know. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. But but uh, I have you know it's uh, it's good having you here, and he'll tell you about his story uh, of dance. It wasn't just uh, uh, him uh, showing Michael Jackson how to do the backslide, uh, well the moonwalk, better known as well backslide, better known as the moonwalk. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and, uh, and and just before I go to the next person, the. Uh, you know, since we're talking about it, I know Kat's going to talk about it a little bit later, but my experience of the backslide is when I first saw the Electric Boogaloos at Crescendo's nightclub in Anaheim. And we were all, because I was, uh, I was help promoting a, a, a thing with Buzzy. Um, Buzzy uh, Reed. A swimmer. And so, and yeah, but it's where, and so <laughs> and I used to do a lot of promoting. And then once these guys, start dancing. It was the first time I ever saw popping, period. <laughs> and once they start doing it, it was great. We were going like, what is this? We hadn't seen it on TV or anything. And to see these guys do this was fantastic. But once they did the backslide, the crowd went like nuts. So that was my first experience uh, seeing it. So, and that person, we have one, one of the founder members of the Electric Boogaloos is Pete. Poppin' Pete. What's that? What's that? Hey, hey. Thank you guys for coming. And um, I just want to do a little, before we go on, do a little cleanup from last week. I always try and do that. Thank you guys for tuning in last week. And um, there was, uh, um, um, uh, you know, we had, we talked about a lot of different things and, and whatever we talk about, 
uh, on the you know on the panel here, we you know we take it serious, and I take each each person serious. And there's no love loss when the conversations are over. So um, so when whatever you have to say, it's going to be um, like right now. It's not going to be nothing that you can say that um, that. That, that would make me dislike anyone. So, and no matter what someone says, because I, I'm, I'm an old, old schooler. I'm the oldest one in this little bunch right here. <laughs> so being, being, being 67 years old, I am the oldest one here. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I have a, you know, I have a, a thick skin in talking about things. But, so that's about last week. It's just, I just want everyone to know uh, I, everyone is, is welcome to say and, and, ex, and, and uh, speak their piece. But I also want you to know what's happening next week um, is that we're going to have the girls from locking from all over the world, you know, like different countries. Uh, they're going to be on to tell a story and some of them might have um, in, interpreters, you know, um, someone to talk for them, but, you know, you know, it's going to go from, you know, from from Asia to uh, all the way to say in the uh, England and stuff like that, to, uh, the, the places like so Paris and stuff like that, and even Russia. So, but so that's what's happening next week with the girls. And then the the following week would be the guys uh, that's been promoting and stuff like that is out there from different countries. We would be on uh, that the following week. So, so we have a, like a full schedule of. Uh, of, of people coming on and telling us their story. And that's why we give a, a two hour period so that everyone would get a chance to say um, what they, um, you know, what they would like to say. So, so there we go for uh, our little house cleaning. cleaning. So actually we're gonna start with um, the newest guy to our uh, team here since he's the, you know, we, we would have to say the baby of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be Andrew. Andrew, uh, yes. you tell us, tell us um, when did you start dancing? What made you want to dance? What has it done for you? And anything that you have done uh, prior or now or in between of dance, you know, in the musical field. So, okay. Uh, well, um, I started dancing. Uh, I would say learning to dance professionally uh, at around 2002. Um, and that was after uh, a failed career of being, um, trying to be a singer. Um, and uh, I actually learned from a guy by the name of Clyde Evans Jr. Um, who was actually a part of another dance company out of Philadelphia called Rennie Harris Pure Movement. Um, so, uh, he actually was the one that taught me uh, the, my foundation, uh, what each style was, and a little bit, of part, a little bit about the history um, based off of what he learned from uh, guys like Pop and Pete, Skeeter Rabbit, um, uh, Sugar Pop, uh, Don Campbell, and some others. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been dancing since then, uh, and I actually uh, formed a group called the Hood Lockers with a couple other guys, Marcus Tucker, Josh Polk, Ricky Evans, um, and uh, Bryce Johnson. Um, and that, that, that group was formed in about 2006. Um, and we basically have been uh, battling, learning, uh, traveling, uh, whatever you can do just to kind of really survive. Um, you know, I started dancing primarily um, because uh, the singing thing didn't work. Um, I dropped out of high school. I was kind of a little ignorant towards, uh, you know, my household, uh, primarily my mother. Um, I was hard headed. Um, <laughs> and I thought that, you know, I didn't need high school. I didn't need, all I needed was my talent. Um, right now, I'm, I'm 39 right now. Um, so back then I was extremely, extremely hard headed. And um, I basically used dance to, to survive. Um, I, rem I can remember a point in my life uh, before I started actually taking dance serious. See, I, I didn't really take life serious. You know, my mom um, was a single parent and she was raising me and my younger, bro my younger brother and my sister. And, you know, she tried, you know, hard to give us 
you know, all that she could. Um, and at the time I was, you know, the oldest, um, and you know, she, she kind of spoiled me a little bit as she should, but I, I, I misinterpreted that as, you know, uh, I, I can do whatever I want. Um, so, you know, long story short, uh, I, that, that kind of mindset actually wound up having me, uh, homeless. Um, and, uh, there was one day when um, I was literally staying in a van. I was actually staying in my stepfather's van, um, you know, at night and he didn't know about it. And one morning he came and found me in the van uh, sleeping, but didn't know that it was me and called the cops on me. Cops came, knocked on the van. He wound up, found out it was me. I basically told him that I was just tired and, you know, I didn't, you know, I was just tired of, of living this life. I was tired of being ignorant. I was tired of, you know, I was just tired of uh, all the all the uh, repercussions from my actions and my behavior. You know, I was just done. Um, so he said, you know, he gave me a couple of dollars, said, you know, take this money, get yourself something to eat, uh, you know, take a bus somewhere to, you know, to your cousin's house or whatever. He's one of your friend's house, I can't remember. Uh, and come back later on the night when me and your mother are off work and we'll figure out exactly, you know, what we're going to do. Uh, so I came back later on that night we sat down at the table and they asked me what I wanted to do. And I told them I'm tired of living, I'm tired of living this lifestyle and lifestyle. You know, I'm, I don't have no job. You know, I go to get a job and I just leave. Like, I, you know, I'm just like kind of, I'm really lazy. I'm like, my mind is just everywhere. You know, at the time, you know, I had was in a relationship and I actually had a child out of that relationship. So, you know, that also had a big, you know, just my mind was just not ready and prepared for everything that was going on based off of my actions. So I basically, still as a child, ran back to my mom, asking my mom to come and help me. And, you know, what they did is they actually drove me to a homeless shelter, dropped me off at the door and said, if you really want to change your life, you're going to prove it. Um, and ever since then, uh, I stayed at that homeless shelter for one night. I can remember uh, staying there and them opening up the windows and the cold air hitting my feet. And this is like 4.30 in the morning, like, get up. Y'all got to get up. Y'all got to get out. And I was like, oh, I was just like, that was like, I was like, I get it. I understand. And so um, I took that opportunity to, to find um, a mentor in Clyde Evans Jr., um, who was very, very instrumental in um, not only getting me spiritually back together, but also getting my mind right and getting get me focused on uh, on just uh, living. Um, and so um, I use dance as kind of like a tool to, you know, keep me living, uh, you know, put my life back together, um, you know, be more responsible father. Um, and, you know, um, and that's just about it, you know. Um, I, I've been on this journey with uh, a guy by the name of Marcus Tucker, AKA Epic Flav, and he's been my partner since high school. We actually um, been dance partners since eighth grade. Um, and so he's been on this journey with me and he was actually kind of really instrumental in, in uh, getting me hooked up with Clyde um, because he actually started learning from Clyde first. Um, so, you know, that's basically a little backstory of, you know, my dancing and the dancing has, has taken me uh, to a lot of places. Um, I, I was on America's Best Dance Crew um, in 2000, uh, uh, season two with a group called Fresh Select. Um, we were on the show for about maybe five, five weeks. Um, I've also done battles, international battles, Step Your Game Up. Um, I, was, I did an international battle 2007 um, UK B-Boy Championship uh, with my partner Bryce Professor Locke um, Johnson. Uh, and yeah, you know, oh. I don't know. I don't know how much more I can really say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm a father, you know, I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, I have, I actually now have, um, four children, um, one, one girl and three boys. Um, they all live with me. Um, my daughter's, my daughter's actually in college right now. She's actually a freshman at Penn State. Um, yeah. So, uh, Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. So, you know, my my whole life, our, our whole lives, including me and my brothers, the Hood Lockers, have been about preserving the image of the, the African American man um, by yeah. any means necessary. And um, 
you know, that's our mission. We don't really have much else to say other than, you know, just our actions. And, you know, we're, you know, we're living life just like everybody else. So we have hardships sometimes, you know, there's places where we, we wish we could be at that we can't be at, or there's people we want to connect with that we can't connect with, but, you know, responsibility dictates otherwise for us. And we have to kind of be real with that first because that's what keeps us who we are, you know, and, uh, and so that's, you know, Fantastic, man. Um, what a what a life story! It, it's it's incredible. Oh, wow. For you, you know, for you to still be here, having to go through what you have gone through, because a lot of people in that situation wouldn't haven't made it out. You know, they're not with us. So so my hats off to you, my brother. So thank um, you. And that's the first time. That's the first time I actually ever said. You know, being able to like I, everybody that's around me, like uh, the group that I work with now, Hood Nation. Um, and the hood locker is my also my b-boy crew because before you know before locking to be honest you know when Clyde saw us he saw me as a b-boy that, that was my first style of dance um, right. I was first a b-boy break dancing okay. you know um, so uh, but you know I, they all know my story because you know they were close to me and I've never really put it out there like that so. no no that's, that's fantastic for you to put it out like that and and um, on you know when, when, when you come on like uh, talking to um, what we call street dance roots is doesn't matter what style you dance. You know, you 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 know, it's it's all about dance. Period. It's not just about locking. Even though you know my career uh, of a street dancer, my favorite dance it was locking, and uh, everything I do is based on locking or from locking. Uh, so I'm I'm a locker, but in, you know, uh, with the umbrella being a street dancer. So and that's why I didn't want to just talk to just lockers because I know a lot about locking and stuff, but I don't know that much about other people that did other dance styles. So, so you breaking, that's fantastic. And you know, you'll hear different stories from different people you know, in a few minutes. So, um, so thank you very much. And, and later on, we'll come back with a little more of a, a, like a group conversation with each other, but, but thank you. I appreciate thank you for having me. You know, I'm I'm really more more so just here just to learn. I'm here to just soak up. You know, <laughs> I watched everybody here dance my entire life. So you know, this is just an honor just to be here and to be, you know, in the in the present. So I thank everybody here for the opportunity. All right, very good. Amen, my brother. Okay, thank thank again, and we we will be back. So so we're gonna go to um, commercial. Uh, <laughs> yeah, commercial. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're gonna go to Mr. Charles because because uh, Charles um, he's gonna tell us about his group because to be honest, when when they started, I uh, you know I've been around a lot. I you know I knew of them, I saw them, and uh, but. Uh, I didn't know uh, as well in the beginning that you were part of that that group either until I saw pictures and, and videos and stuff like that. So, uh, so um, I would like to hear about your your life as you uh, you know when you first started dancing, how you guys came up with uh, with the with the group name um, you know Funky Bunch and and um, when you guys started, everything about your life as a dancer that that you want to tell us. <laughs> Oh, well, my first, you know, I fell in love with dancing, looking at James Brown. You know, I think even at Lockers and anybody that ever had inspiration, they, they got it from James Brown. Because when I sang James Brown, even for the Lockers, I mean, I would just admire doing splits and turnarounds. So I was doing, I was doing splits when I was maybe about uh, 10, eight, eight to 10 years old, you know. So once you learned how to master a split, you could turn out any dance, you know, like you'd be at a, you know, junior high or high school dance and you hit a split and everybody like, oh man, you know, so split was big back, back in, in them days. So, but when I saw the lockers for the first time and back then you don't have videotape. So my buddy ran home, he said, hey man, you see these guys? And I'm like, oh man, it just blew my mind. I mean, just to see the style and something that you never seen before was just so amazing. But we didn't have no video. So everything that we did, I self-taught myself uh, how to lock. So I didn't, I didn't have no mentor. I didn't have nobody to say, this is how you do this. This is how you ski the rabbit. I just kind of like remember what I've seen and learned from other dancers of being around them how to do certain uh, 
aspects of lock-in. So the first group I was in, it was called a, a group called the Star Lock Lockers. And I had a friend named Tracy Davis. And we are, uh, I was in junior high school. They was in high school. And uh, man, this guy, Tracy Davis, was remarkable. Anything I can do, he can do. So when we got together, we was like a mirror image. So when we learned how to lock, there wasn't so much individual. Charles, I'm sorry. Charles, I'm sorry. Could you tell me what year that was when you, you know, I'm sorry. This is in 19, this is 1975. Okay. Uh, that uh, they had the Star Lock lockers, you know. And so uh, my friend, we, we, when we learned how to lock, we, we learned how to lock in unity. We didn't learn individually. Individually, we took it up on our own to do our own thing. But as a group, uh, we just brought a different style. Like the lockers were more individual, but they would do their background step, where our, our group learned how to uni unify locking together. So that was our style back then, you know. So uh, it was like seven of us. So we kind of mirrored the lockers, you know. We wanted to, we, you know, we just didn't have a fat guy in our group, but <laughs> we tried to mirror the lockers and do all that. So with so many groups out there, because I came from Compton, so it was a lot of groups out there. It was a matter of fact, Gregory Pope, uh, he had a brother. They had a group called the Junior Lockers at that time. And it was a group called, uh, you probably, you know, uh, Lil Joe, they was, they was called the Dance Masters. So it was a Dance Master, it was a Junior Dance Masters. Uh, it was so many groups out there, you know, dancing at that time. The Majestics, they used to be the car wash. The guys with the firm C, and uh, it was for them. So it was the Majestics. It was, I man, I can name Anthony King. He went to Dominguez. He's called the King of Pop. And we had groups. At, we had groups at our, our school at Captain High. So, the group that I created along the way, Captain Crunch and the Funky Bunch. Uh, long story short, I had entered a, a talent show at a school called Regina Chaley, mm -hmm. and uh, I had three of my old members, uh, Tracy and Timmy. And as we got older, everybody was, you know, getting jobs, having babies. So everybody kind of lost interest. And I still was in high school, and I didn't. I didn't lose interest. I was like, man. I just love to dance. I enjoy dancing. And uh, so uh, the last day that we posed to perform to get in the talent show, my two friends copped out. And I'm like, oh, man, so it's just me solo. So that day I went to school and I said, hey, uh, anybody want to know uh, going to be in this talent show? It was hard to get in a talent show. So I auditioned like eight to 10 guys that day. And we auditioned. We practiced. Man, from four o'clock to about one in the morning, because I'm a perfectionist. I'm like, oh, man, no, this ain't, I ain't gonna embarrass myself. That's one thing as a street dancer, you don't wanna embarrass yourself. So I'm like, man, so we practiced. And these, these guys was in other groups. So, you know, so we uniformed and got together. And uh, we went to Regina Chady that day and we performed. I thought we did okay. I didn't think that, you know, we blew anybody away, but, you know, just by me being who I am, I'm just like trying to be on top of things. But at the end of the day, uh, we took first place. And, when, and that was just in one day. And I told the guys, I said, man, look, if we could take first place in some stiff competition in one day, look what we can do, uh, uh, you know, coming to the future. And so next thing you know, man, we practice four hours a day. And I learned the element of surprise. Like and my man was talking about, you know, Get into, get into battles and so you prepare for battles you prepare to be in a talent show you prepare for all that but things are so heavy on the streets that if you weren't prepared you're gonna get turned out so you could compare you could prepare yourself for a talent show right but when somebody catch you slipping at a club at a dance at a house party i mean people knew your reputation and they're gonna get at you at anywhere anywhere they can just to say they turned you out. So sometimes you'll be, we'll be on stage, man, and guys would jump on stage in the middle of a talent show <laughs> and, and challenge you right there. They'd take off their hat, they'd throw your hat on the ground, stomp your hat, pull down your socks. I mean, they'd take your suspenders and pop your suspend. Oh, man, you talking about balance. And it, it, if, you didn't, if you didn't keep up for composure, man, it, it would be a fight. It would be a fight. <laughs> we'll be fighting. I mean, actually, it would be a fight if, if you didn't hold your composure. And, you know, so you, you learn the element of surprise that all the time 
that you had to be on P P's and Q's. And if you didn't, if you was outdated, or if you was, uh, I, I would say a prima donna, but if you kept on doing the same thing, everybody knew exactly what you're gonna do, so you wasn't, you wasn't all that effective. So uh, when I saw the electric boogaloo's, I'm like, oh man, my, my friend Gary came. Now it's Gary, that's my buddy, Steve Higgs, Gary Porter, and Essex Jeffrey. So we formed Captain Crunch and the Funky Bunch. Man, I remember I met Decky. Yeah, I had seen the electric boogaloo. If it was Decky and uh, Sam, yeah. and we was all we was all at the funk festival. And it's 1978, 79. We was at the funk festival. Yep. And uh, man, and and uh, this is before Skeet got with you guys. Yep. Skeet and Little Reggie. We yep. was all up there. We was battling each other, man. Like just getting at each other. Like man, we was going at it, you know. And so I told my friend, I told Gary, I said, look, man, if we gonna stay in this game. We got to learn how to pop because I said, we don't know how to pop. Uh, we not going to have no advantage over nobody. I said, because we just going to be one dimensional. So man, we, we, we started battling guys at Captain High, uh, a <laughs> guy named Skeleton, yep. uh, uh, a guy named uh, uh, Roy Brooks, all of them. So we, uh, 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 Charles, he was calling the puppet master. So everybody, Watch so we, we had to learn, we had to learn popping real fast real quick so we just we, you know we used to go to a club in alpine village and, yep. and, and with some samoans heckle and jekyll oh, yep. and uh, man the booyah tribe right now <laughs> man man i'm talking about man if you wasn't ready so we knew we had a, a advantage to a certain degree because a lot of people hadn't mastered locking yet and locking is an art form of deception it's, a, it's, it's, it's not just dancing. See, people just, oh, they could just move their arms. No, it's, it's much more than that. It's almost like you have to set up, you never show anybody your best moves. You play with your best moves, but you gotta be able to, I learned by looking at the lockers, you dance with props. Like, sometimes you use a scarf, sometimes you use a ball, sometimes you use your hat, sometimes you use different things, and you, and, and you never come out the same way. Because see, a, a person that's value, they already know exactly what you're gonna do. Like I already knew a, a lot of people what they're gonna do before they did it. So I could already calculate, I'm gonna do this to trigger him off, but then at the end, I'm gonna do this that I know he can't do. So a lot of times, a lot of groups got in because they seen elected boogaloo. So all of them thought they could be the elected boogaloo. So everybody, hey, you know, we can do this. So I already knew the, the limitation on a lot of groups. So we would battle guys on a pop, and but that wasn't our forte. Our forte was locking. So we would battle guys as long as we could stay even with them lock uh, popping. We was cool because we weren't trying to turn them out popping. We were just trying to turn them out. <laughs> Boy, when we started locking, they couldn't do nothing but step back and say, "Damn, what the <laughs> fuck?" Oh, excuse my language, but <laughs> they'd be like. Oh, we can't hang with these guys because we diving over each other's head. We sliding through legs. We got routines. We got skits. We don't. We, I mean, because if you if you if you lose a battle, then you lose your reputation. Yeah. And once you lose your reputation, it's hard to get that back. And, and, and so every day we practice four hours a day, the, uh, putting it down on 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 a, on a street level. So being on Soul Train, that was like cupcake. Because I remember the, the floor director said, man, why, how you, why you dance so hard? And I said, look, man, I'm a baller. I don't, when I come down this Soul Train line, I'm a performer. I'm not coming down the line just to come down. I'm a performer. So by nature, I, I'm performing. And uh, so I, I was doing some moves. And then my buddy hooked me up. He said, look, man, stop doing all your best moves because people got recorders. So when you do go out and perform, they're going to have your moves. So we stopped even really dancing hard on Soul Train. So a lot of things that you've seen us do on Soul Train, we would make that up on the spot within like, maybe like five minutes. We would just say, hey, let's do this, do that. And we just do it. When we, if, if I know the magnitude of what we could have left behind, I would have did my best on Soul Train because oh, that was history. But I did, by, by being a street dancer, you didn't want everybody biting your moves because people would go back and record your stuff, steal your stuff, and then, you know, and then they'll use that against you when you battling. But, you know, to a certain point, you, you get away from battling. Now it's time to make money. 
And then video wasn't uh, assets at that time. So when people started coming from you, hey, I want you to go on tour, video. And if you been have shown all your good stuff, then nobody really want to see you. You know what I mean? So uh, that was my journey for us, introducing myself into the public arena. But the battles is just another story. My hardest battle that I ever had was with Skeeter Rabbit. Ski, wow, let me tell you something about Skeeter Rabbit. <laughs> Skeeter Rabbit was the most competitive. Uh, he would not take no for answer. <laughs> he don't care where he battling you at. Just tell us which Skeeter uh, Rabbit because there's two of them. Uh, okay, uh, Steve, 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 Steve. Okay. Uh, so, uh, man, man, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> but once he learned how to pop, because he already had master locked down, and everybody got their own style. Like my style was just like like the locker style was comedian locking. You know, they they could do comedian things that make you like, oh man, that, or you know, like Fluthy would come out with a toothbrush. You know what I mean? Or they could just do trick things. My things, I was just straight go go go. You know, I'm like, I didn't use comedian things. I just like, I, I'm just going for it. I'm like trying to, I'm like Mike Tyson as his, as his finest. I'm trying to tear your head off. I'm like going at it. Right. So we was at the uh, Holiday Inn. And I, and, 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 and uh, so, you know, at that time it was, it was, you know, it was street dancing. And I met up, I had met uh, uh, Steve a, a few times. So him and my buddy Steve was into it and they was arguing. And and so Skeet, and I already knew Skeet could, you know, you know, get down. And I was like, my buddy Gary's like, hey, Steve, back off, man. Uh, he gonna wear you out. And so they got at it. Bam, 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 this. Uh, so my buddy Gary edged me on, man. Don't he ain't gonna he, he can't just turn out Steve, man. You you gotta get him. So I jumped in. And we was matching moves. Ski was matching moves. I'm matching moves. He do a breakdown. I do a breakdown. He do scissors, I'm doing scissors. We were just doing, we, we was at him, and we were, we were dancing all knee deep. This is nine minute battle, okay? Nine <laughs> minutes. Yeah. This ain't no yeah. take a stop. This ain't taking a break. This is about reputation. <laughs> I had a friend named Ramon, and Ramon threw out this scarf, and he knew I could get down with this scarf. He threw it at me, and I grabbed the scarf, and I just worked this scarf, and the scarf was like, you you see me dance with the scarf and you it'll disappear. And here I'm doing a split, yep. it reappear. Yep. And then I throw it in my head and you point, you looking, and you're like, what's the scarf? And I'm hitting breakdown, blah, blah, blah. And then when I got through, he said, damn, Charles, you got me. I'm going to get you one day. <laughs> and we just battled. Oh, we, oh man, you talking oh, about, that was the battle wow. of the ages. <laughs> I mean, we, me and him just went head up. Yeah. And, and, I, and from that point, man, I had the utmost respect knowing that this guy right here, man, he had what it takes to, to, to take himself to another level. But then when he got with the elected boogaloo, it, it, he, he just went to another level. Because he had, he, what I love to do, he, he, he had already mastered. And I ain't seen too many guys, I could say lock, that I, I was amused of. You know what I mean? I, I seen people get down, I seen moves, I seen routines and steps. But the, I would tell anybody who lock in, the form of locking, if you don't have the camel locked down, it don't look good. Right. And if you don't learn how to camel lock, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how many splits you're doing, how many hand points you're moving. It, 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 it locking it, it's the, locking, camel locking is the key to locking. And so I see a lot of guys locking, but they don't camel lock right. It's almost like if you popping and you ain't got your footwork right, I don't care all the body ways and all that. If your footwork is not right <laughs> and popping, you ain't you ain't popping. And same thing with locking. If you ain't got if you ain't got the the real camel lock, I call it the real camel lock, not the fake. Uh, I'm talking about the real camel lock. If you ain't got that down, you you coming up short. So I would tell anybody <laughs> that's locking, learn how to master camel locking first. Because if you don't get the camel lock first. You you just coming up short, you know what I mean? Right. So mm -hmm. I had to learn how to count a lot. The Skeeter Rabbit, all that, the Shabadoo, the splits, the breakdowns, all that's coming. But if you ain't got that, 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 you ain't got that right, man, you in trouble, you know. So that was my journey for is like uh the street battle and then 
I can touch on some other things uh, later on uh, yeah, we'll, we'll that, that we did. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll come back, but thank you. Thank, that was All right. Wow. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> right on, my brother. That was, that wow. was very good. Good history. Good history. Wow. See, that's the kind of history that I'm looking for. You know, just like, you know, everyone's been talking so far. That, that's, you know, we want to hear about what you went through. You know, you went through, and that's what you went through. And I appreciate that. All righty. Next, Mr. Caspa. Yes, sir. We would like to hear the same, like your story. What starts you? What did it do for you? And where are you now? Uh, right now, I'm in Fullerton. Whole <laughs> 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 lockdown. We all on lockdown. <laughs> on lockdown. Right. Oh, sorry, let me grab my mask. <laughs> right. uh, anyway, yeah, started off Orange County, grew up, um, you know, just dancing, you know, watching Soul Train, just just wanting to dance like the people on Soul Train, just dreaming one day I was going to be on Soul Train, and that would have been enough for me, and just, you know, getting your boogie on, there was that sort of natural rhythm thing that was, but the day I saw the lockers on Soul Train it changed the whole game up for me. It was like, I have got to learn this dance and nobody else around you know me at the time um you know could could do the dance or was interested not at that very moment because they hadn't met Cooley or any of those guys yet and uh but I would come home for school and create my own locking outfit I'll put some sweats on and roll them up <laughs> put some socks on get mom's church gloves and put them on white church gloves <laughs> and get one of her hats and turn it to my derby and just try and try and try. And then my sister came downstairs one day and looked at me and said, what are you doing? And she said, are you trying to do this? And she broke out locking. And I was like, teach me how to do that. Teach me how to do that. And she schooled me. She was the first one to school me how to lock, even though she never wanted to be one and never danced. But she's the mm -hmm. one that got me started. That was in you know early 70s. And uh, <laughs> took me to the next level. But then I got into robot. So back in Carson, when I had moved into Carson for a short time <coughs> in Dominguez, <coughs> um, there's guys that they were really up on the robot thing. They were, they were really dope on it. Nobody locked, but they robot it. <coughs> so I picked up that style and I brought that back to Orange County. <coughs> when I brought that back to Orange County, that's when uh, some other guys started getting interested. Edwin Milhouse, Jimmy Henderson, um, Henry Smith, all these people started to learn and wanted to start locking. So they formed this group and they named it after me. They call it Casper and the Kid. He said, well, you're the one, you know, that came on and started teaching us. So they called Casper and the Kids. I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> if that's what you guys yeah. want to do. So we yeah. had our little crew and we do the talent shows at school and do all that. <clears throat> and then one year, I don't know if you guys remember Sugar Ray Youth Foundation, they would come and do these big shows yearly at different schools every year and people from LA, Long Beach or whatever and they would come down to where it was held that year <clears throat> and that year uh, Cooley and his group the Dynamite Kids <clears throat> and I had heard about them they had heard about us that they were really technically the dopest crew in Orange County <clears throat> well I mean our age at least and uh, Cooley wanted to battle me and there was all these rumors that Cooley that yeah Cooley said he could turn you out he's turned you out <laughs> I was like I don't know I didn't have a battle mentality at the time. It was just, I just wanted to dance. Let's just get up there and do our thing. And uh, so Cooley, before the show started, walks up to me and said, I heard you wanted to battle me. I said, uh, no, but I did hear you wanted to battle me. And then he looked at me, we looked at each other. Said, All right, cool, shook hands. And he was like, oh, well, we'll see you on stage. So apparently we got up there on stage and we did our thing. And I guess it shocked him. There's like, okay, this dude. And then when I got into my robot things, like, this dude can robot. It's like, okay, it's like, but the other ones, it's like, uh. so when it was over, my crew start had very little interest. They asked me to be, be a part of their crew, which was the Dynamite Kids. And so whenever when my boys, they were like, yeah, you know, keep doing your thing. We all kind of danced around with each other. So I joined the Dynamite Kids. We had Manny Edwards, Brian Ramsey, <coughs> at the time, um, myself, Cooley. We were the main heart of the group. And so I started learning locking a little bit better in their style. And we took that 
and we just started doing shows all over town, all mainly primarily Orange County. It came to the point where the Dynamite Kids was kind of falling off. And Cooley said one day, you know what? There's these contests all around. Why don't you and me go do these contests? I said, man, I'm 15 years old. Where, 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 where am we going to go and do these contests? So we would get us into the clubs, and we had met Alpha, and we had did a contest at, I don't know if you were there or not, but yeah, you were there at the Westminster Mall. Yeah, yeah. You, you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> deputy, whatever the case. And Stan. And Cooley said, comes around to us and says, lockers are here. And we were like, okay, we're not getting in it. <laughs> we're not coming down. I said, we can beat them. <laughs> That's all Cooley said, we can, we can beat them. I said, dude, are you crazy? He said, no, we can beat them. And Cooley was as confident as the confident can be. And you know Cooley how he is. <laughs> so you got up there that day and we won. <laughs> and that was the start of the whole thing. And from there, um, Alpha and the rest of the crew brought us in as a junior crew. So we would open for the lockers and um, do some shows with them. And that's how we got caught up with the lockers and the crew that way. And then we started just, Cooley and I started to go out and doing battles. <clears throat> Battle in the clubs and every club we can find, wherever there was money involved, anywhere from uh, Magic Mountain all the way down back to OC, we were <laughs> finding the spots. One day, <clears throat> there was a club called Ichabod's in Fullerton. Yeah. We got our way into full uh, Ichabod's. Yeah. And <clears throat> wait, back up, back up, back up. We had saw at Alpha's house, you had this little clip of the boogaloos. You oh, had about yeah. 20 seconds of it on your, on your beta at the time. Yes, yes, and you yes. call us in the room and said, you got to come check this out. Come check this out. <laughs> so I go in there and it's showing, it's popping people. You guys were on Midnight Special. The boogaloos were on the Midnight Special. Yeah. And uh, Only had a little bit of the tail end of the performance. They were creeping, creeping <laughs> each other little bit of creeping and then somebody start backsliding i think dane probably did his vibrating thing or something like that um <clears throat> and then we saw that but man it was the same feeling i had when i first saw locking when i saw popping mm. i was like okay i gotta learn this i gotta mm. learn this mm. i took that clip and started learning rewinding it rewinding it rewinding it until it wore that thing out and <laughs> trying to learn <laughs> little you can then we met larry twig mccraw mm. Alpha, I don't know how you met him or how you learned of it, but you're the one that told us about him and you invited Larry to the house. Right. <clears throat> and Larry started schooling us on what was what. was what. He had his own locking style called philosophy locking. And uh, he started mm -hmm. teaching us how to pop and a little bit more. And then we took it from there and run it. That's when we hit the Ichabod's thing. So in Ichabod's in Orange County, nobody was popping yet. Nobody knew how to get out like that. So Cooley and I went to the club and all the OGs were there, Alpha and M, Lukey Luke, everybody was there. And here come Cooley and I, newcomers on the block. We're watching the contest and everybody's doing their thing. I said, I'm, me, I'm, I'm the guy in the back going, we can, man, we can't beat that. We can't, we can't beat that Cooley. We can beat them. We can beat them. Because <laughs> that was Cooley's thing. So we're like last. If we're the newcomers, we go up last and <laughs> dance into Foxy. Or Hot Number, should I say. Hot Number by Foxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come out and do it, and the and the crowd is kind of quiet at first, and suddenly we broke into the popping thing. Man, the crowd was so loud we could hardly hear the music after that. They just went, Wah. and it was like that was the start of our career on the circuit when we first hit that club. Then they brought Jeffrey Daniel down, the dude Cleveland Moses, yes. Cleveland from Soul Train, brought her and saw us, and he tried to describe popping to Jeffrey, and he was like, and he couldn't really do it. So he's like, you got to come down to this club and see Catherine Cooley, because he hadn't heard of the Boogaloos at the time. He said, you got to see these guys. You got to come down. So he come down that day. Jeff brought Jeffrey down. Jeff was a judge, you know, being a judge. And we weren't even going to dance that night. But uh, uh, Cleveland comes, man, Jeff, well, I brought this dad out to check you guys out. He said, oh, no, OK. He said, you got to get in. And he said, man, OK. And Cooley said, you want to do it? He did it. Went in, in did our popping thing, blew Jeffrey away. He's sitting against them. So after the performance, Cooley, uh, Jeffrey's leaning against the bar, and I'm looking at because I recognize Jeffrey from the OG summer before Shalimar, just the whole Soul Train thing. And I was like, that's dude from Soul Train that used to dance. He came back, and Jeffrey leaned against the bar, and he approached us and he said, man, that was crazy, man. That was crazy. And he's like, would you teach me? He was like, yeah, definitely. 
that night, like that next night, we went hung out till like two, three in the morning, just hanging out. He brought us down to his crib. He started teaching him to pop. We said, you know what? I'll get you guys on Soul Train. Let's go on Soul Train. So he was like, are you for real? He's like, yep, I'm gonna take you guys to Soul Train. So he took us to Soul Train, got down and gave us a spotlight number. And it was the first time that popping was seen on a national level when me, Jeffrey and Cooley did the little spot thing on Soul Train. And we had been rehearsing to Herbie Hancock, ready or not, all right? When we yeah. get there to do the do the performance, they changed it to Michael Jackson working day and night and didn't even tell us. <laughs> just flipped it on us. And we were thought we thinking we're already waiting for the boom and something in the record start. It was like, what the heck? Go. <laughs> and it was like, so we started off a little off, but it worked out great. Because it so happens, Michael Jackson was watching the performance. I mean, later got to see that performance. And that's how he found out, you know, the whole and we had, you know, at that time, Jeffrey at the end of the things, you know, he talked about the boogaloos, where we learned to dance from. He said, like, the group electric boogaloos is where, you know, where we learned this from. <laughs> and so he cropped out because they wanted to get the boogaloos on Soul Train, um, which of course they did later. But uh, Michael had saw that performance and uh, or got a copy of it. And then they reached out, he reached out to the Soul Train office <laughs> and they got a hold of me. And this is in 1981 at this time because that performance was in 79 and 81 by the time so he must got a copy of it and just couldn't figure out what he wanted to do he eventually got a hold of the soul train thing because you know they re-air things and it's like okay reach out to the people that thing so i get a call from ron weisner michael jackson's manager at the time and the, the funky part is that i had just shot a video of doing a michael jackson impersonation like two days before they were taking this video with a bunch of impersonators, so to speak, and they were going to um, take this video, mark this video, and do this tour with all these impersonators. So I was doing Michael. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Cool. So I get a call like the next day from my manager saying we had to kill the video. I said, why? He said, copyright infringements, because all the music that they were using belonged to somebody else. We couldn't sell those videos with that music on there. And I said, am I in trouble? He said, no, you cool, you cool, don't worry about it. Sure. The next morning, the phone rings, and my mom yells from downstairs, it's Michael Jackson's manager on the phone. They're like, uh, are you, are you serious? And I, the phone comes, I go to the phone, it's like, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking I'm about to be sued. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> right? So in front of Michael, yeah, Michael says, uh, yeah, he saw some kind of dance on Soul Train, I don't know what it is. He wants you to teach him, can you do it? Uh, yeah. He's like, uh, well, here's the number, give him a call. Just like that. <laughs> Hang up the phone and mom's screaming like, Casper, we're losing you, you're, you're frozen. Boy, sound like Team Payne. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was the rehearsal for the Triumph Tour. And uh, so, there you uh, go. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't, am I good now? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, you I know that Teddy Riley your, stuff. Your camera is not going to let you move around a lot. So your camera, you're going to have to be kind of like more uh, un, uh, animated, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> you're you're animated. Animated. Yeah. Are we good now? Yeah, we're good now. OK, yeah. So anyway, we connected. Went down to the studio. Um, <clears throat> Cooley showed up for one day, um, and uh, we tried to show him. I tried to show him the real moonwalk, and uh, along with the backslide, but he took it and mistook it as the backslide was called the moonwalk, and that's how it got connected to being called the moonwalk in the first place. Because Thank you. All the moonwalk, <laughs> thinking that was the one move, and so it was like. Because I, I, you know, I demonstrated and Cooley demonstrated the moonwalk, and then he did that little walk, um, slide in place, backslide thing where you kind of you're right in place. And Michael adapted it later, and I said, well, yeah, or you can get up and do this. And then I hit the backslide, and he jumped off the stage, losing his mind, like, oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. And I said, okay. And then the, the session ended. Then I came back the next few times, it was just me, and uh, 
So I said, yeah, it would be really cool if you learn how to moonwalk first and then go right into the slide after that. So he, after that, the only name that stuck in his mind was moonwalk. The backslide didn't stand out. So when he performed it, finally, um, and people asked him what it was, he said moonwalk. And that's how it got the name. And it was like, oh, no, 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 that's not it. I mean, I can go into it later, Pete, no, Pete and I know yes. the story and when he first did it. But I, mean, I don't know how far you want me to go and all that stuff, but, you know, we can come back around if you want to or. Uh, no, no, you, um, you, can, you have a few you more keep going? Can because uh, at, he was supposed to perform the backslide on that tour. So when they made the tour back to L.A., we had worked it out on the song. I, you know, I broke on important working. I'm uh, working there, but um, don't stop till you get enough. I say when the break on, don't stop till you get enough. You're gonna hit this move and hit the move. We got to the tour and he didn't do it. So we went backstage after the show and said, "Hey, what happened?" He said, "You know what? I didn't feel like I had it down yet. I didn't feel like I had it down." Yet. Okay, well, you know, um, cool. Well, you know, we want to work on it some more. When you get back, we can do that. That's cool and whatnot. When the tour is over, he came back, and so that never happened. And years ago, a year goes by, another year goes by, I forget, figure he forgot all about it and it was never going to happen. At that time, Pop and Pete, the Electric Boogaloos had fallen off. My crew were filling off and Jeffrey put. <laughs> we're missing the best part of you, bro. <laughs> Me and Cooley. Closing again. Pop and Pete, Skeet. I'm sorry. Am I? I yeah, don't know. Start, where start, was, where'd start, you leave off? Yeah, start where you were saying something about the boogaloos or something, you know, the electric boogaloos had fallen or something or... Okay, so when then Jeffrey Daniel put, when the boogaloos were no longer performing as a group anymore, Jeffrey took Cooley, myself, Pop and Pete, Robot Dane, and Skeeter Rabbit and put us together. And he was going to make a singing group out of us, a singing popping group. And none of us really sang at the time or any of that stuff. So he brings in the girl by the name of Brenda Johns and she was on Soul Train as well. So we met her at Soul Train. And so she would follow us around because she wanted to learn how to pop. So she, she was one of the first female poppers around there. She wanted to learn how to pop, but she can sing her butt off. So Jeffrey brings her and us and decided we're gonna make her the lead singer and you guys will call you guys Eclipse. And um, that started Eclipse and then we became a group you know, did our shows locally and did whatever we came in the studio, did a few tracks, and then made our way to the UK. Um, when we got to the UK, um, we started rising up. Got a chance to open up for Wham. Um, we, you know, did some other tours, went to Africa, did all this stuff, did some major shows, and they started saying, well, these guys are the next command performers for the Queen. Things were heading up all in the right direction until the group, unfortunately, broke up. Um, and we're work our way back to LA and uh, no so we're there in London again back to the moonwalk thing or backslide thing so we're there in London we're watching and then the Motown 25th thing comes on and we're just talking talking about you know hey Castro didn't you work with Michael and I did, yeah yeah but he never did it type of thing and uh, suddenly he breaks into Billy Jean and he hits the move and then it was like what you know everybody's just kind of losing their mind because michael just michael hit the backslide we're like what 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 he did it and uh of course that changed his career and took him to a whole new level after that because it became this thing that he created which we know that it came from somewhere else um, that uh what it's known for Casper. <laughs> <laughs> you're breaking up. <laughs> yeah, you're on that. You, you're on that four Whenever you start talking about something, then you're weird. I'm we're not moving. Out, like we were doing, listening to Charles at the edge of our <laughs> seat. Yeah, we were at the yeah, edge yeah. of our seat, and then you said, "Run, burn, boop, pop." You gotta talk really slow. I still can't see you. Uh, I mean, I can see you, but you're frozen. Telling that's that, that's that three G. You know, yeah, no, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna see you a real camera. <laughs> you got to wait for the movie now. <laughs> I see you. You're frozen. You're not. You guys are all. I'm old school. I got OG. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what we're gonna have to do then? 
Um, you probably have to like not say anything for a little bit, uh, unplug it and plug it back in or something like that. Not not the whole system, but just um, just that we totally lost you now. <laughs> but we got to move on. But Casper, we, we want to get you back, so make sure you come back because that was it was a, a very interesting story. Very very. So so were you with um, were you in London at, when that happened, Pete? Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So you can yeah. well, let Casper finish so you can take off from that. I mean, well, within your story, you don't have to start there. You can start wherever you okay. want. But Casper, finish um, telling us, but try not to move so much. I'm, I'm trying to stay still. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Tell us. Uh, uh, just finish up that and, and then we'll come back. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting signals here that's saying my in, internet in is London, unstable. When you first saw it. Okay, so in London, again, we're watching the Motown 25th thing, and when, when Michael broke into it, you know, we all kind of lose it, and, um, yeah. you know, it was just, a, 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 for me, seeing him do the move, and it was more like, oh, man, I actually taught him how to do that, was the trippiest thing in the world for me, was like, wow, okay, and, um, you know, and even if nobody would have ever known, I actually still have a copy of the check he paid me to mm -hmm. teach him that. That actually says um, private dance lessons for Michael Jackson. We just made a copy of that stuff just for our own personal thing. And it turned out to be something that uh, we're using and, and people, because, you know, a lot of people made some claims over the years to have done some mm. things, but uh, yeah. that was sort of my saving grace. Like, yeah. You know, no, okay, this was the dude that really did, you know what I'm saying? And there's, there's evidence there behind it to back up that I still have, even though I, I own the still the itinerary um, that was given to me with, um, you know, this many lessons, this many days, starting on this date, and so on. I still have copies signed by his people and my people. I still have all that stuff, my own personal mm -hmm. records that just turned out to be, you know, not a collector's item now for me. And um, so it was real cool um, just, just having that, uh, starting a movement, really, um, and, and more people being interested in street dance just because he started doing that move, just that move alone, just opened up the floodgates um, internationally. Um, fantastic, Casper. Yeah. You're breaking up uh, still, but um, just to let people know as well that because Casper is like my little brother, him and Cooley, they, you know, they always, they always, I, I always call them my little brothers, you know, because they were so young when I met them. But um, I remember when he showed me that that check. <laughs> he was so happy. <laughs> and it's funny, you remember Greg, uh, Casper? Which, you know, Greg, was, which Greg? The one that, that, um, that I was renting a house from in Cerritos. That, that oh, yeah, house. yes, 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 Greg? that house. Yeah, Greg, just the other day, we were talking, we just happened to be talking. And he said, I re he, he was over there that time when he saw the check. Because he said, out of the blue, he said, he said, yeah, I saw Casper check that. He came and showed us the check that he did to mm -hmm. Time with Michael Jackson, and and this is a Greg is not a dancer. He just you know he was just the average guy, and that's and I it was just surprising that he even mentioned that. But I, I remember, remember it. for that. Wow. Yeah, wow. no, that was incredible. But anyways, thank you for that, and I'm sorry that um, uh, the mic, I mean the camera was a little choppy. Something but, with the internet. Yeah, it's the yeah. internet going on over here. Yeah, it's okay. But we we got the gist of it, and I, I appreciate it, and thank you, and. Um, and it's good hearing all of the, the, the uh, your, 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 see that, and again, that's your history. And that's what, that's what it's all about. I'm saying it more so like this because when other people come on, I want them to know that I'm not really, I don't want you to tell me who made up something and, 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 and if you're not sure who made it up, I just want to hear about your story, you know, your, your story. Right. And that was excellent. So far, it's been like so perfect, and I know now that it's going to be so. There's there's no out for him because yeah. <laughs> being one of the originators, there's no out. <laughs> he didn't have to learn anything from everybody else. Man, yes, I did. <laughs> so, I'm gonna turn this over to uh, thank Casper. I appreciate it, brother. And uh, yeah, now I'm gonna turn it over to Pop and Pete, uh, the legendary Pop and Pete. Everyone knows who you are, but um, it's all up to you, brother. Tell me all about man. This. You know, for one, let me just say, first and foremost, it's um, been very intriguing and very, like, I'm, I'm a student of, of dance and dance history. So 
you know, I, you know, I know a lot of people, I mean, far as, I mean, the guys are here now, you know, especially uh, uh, Charles uh, and, 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 and Casper. A lot of stuff I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I, you know, we know each other. And of course, uh, Casper became the, the, the brother, you know, because we, we, like I said, was in the group together and, and just danced in, in many other shows. But I, it, it's good to hear these stories, man. I'm so grateful that, that I came from that era, but also I didn't know every one story from that era. So, uh, especially in their beginning. So it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and, and to hear it. And even uh, uh, my nephew Andrew uh, story, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I'm just kind of like, I mean, anyway. So let me, of course, you know, <laughs> I'm glad out for you doing this, man. So let me kick mine off. The, I come, I'm from a, a little town, central California, Fresno. Um, I have been dancing, and like many of us in here, you know, family functions, uh, talent shows. The first talent show I ever was in when I was six years old in Fresno. Uh, and of course, I was my biggest, one of the big influences, of course, at the time was James Brown. Well, I, you know, I was known to, to do, do the James Brown, like many talented dancers on, you know, in, in the neighborhoods that I, that I came from. Um, it was a, a guy who, his name was Little Luke. Little Luke was a biracial, uh, my biracial friend, who his mom was white, his father was black, but mom was just like any, uh, any other mom on the block. She would whip your butt if you did something. <laughs> and they lived, and they happened to live next door. Little Luke, I mean, again, you growing up, you, you know, in the neighborhood, Every, everybody that you can dance and sing, sing and dance, dance, sing, it's, it's going to be one of those two or a combination of both. So, uh, or you have your rivals with your, with your siblings or your cousins or whomever. So Little Luke was, you know, he was a year older than me and he just praised and loved James Bond, as we all did, because that was, that was who, you know, again, and we talking about uh, 1971. 72, um, and he just started learning and doing all these, all these James Brown moves. Again, you know, like Charles said, if you know how to do the splits, you know how to do, you know, you can get busy. So he was doing splits, doing all this stuff. And his mom was a seamstress. So she would freaking like tailor, uh, make outfits that looks just like James Brown, stuff that we had seen on television. And he, and they started calling him, he was Little Luke, but they started calling him Little James Brown. And when and that was he was like seven. By the time he got to to fifteen, he had a he had a band. He was like and he would perform in Fresno on talent shows and do the whole Jane Brown live. <laughs> hit me with uh, uh, hit me with it. Like he's singing the songs. So yeah, he was the person that I looked up to that I, I wanted to be on stage. I wanted to I wanted that that admiration. I wanted that crowd to scream like, oh my God. So when I was six, he invited the talent show, and, and I mean, I could dance, but they had uh, they uh, said we want you to dance with Little Luke. Okay, oh what? So we danced to a, a James Brown song, and I remember part of the step. He would he would like get on his uh, put one knee up, and, you know, put the knee down. He said, and I would sit on one one on his leg, and we did, doing all kinds of things. Then he would, he'd drop into a split. Then I I'm six and I drop into what I thought was a split. And and the crowd went crazy. I got that's when I got the, the bug. So I'm I'm knowing I want to be on stage. Um, again, now fast forward. Soul Train's de debuts. We watching Soul Train, of course, all the dancing. Then by the time we start in seventy two ish, seventy three around. That's when I saw the first time I seen Charles the Robot and Slim and you know and Locking. But after Robot is what I was intrigued. Plus there was a song called Do the Robot. Uh, in back in the day, and uh, so I started like everyone else started doing learn how to do the robot. I was uh, in I was in the seventh grade with my sister, who was a year older than me, who was a better dancer than me. Uh, entered the talent show at at, at a um, junior high school. We went to a predominantly white junior high school because uh, at that time we, I, I'm I'm a product of of the the integration of kids when they signed the 
1965 when they signed the, the you know the you know civil rights act and the, and the integration and all that stuff and we can now go to school with the white kids but it didn't happen in, for us until like 71 72 so i was bust and we took us out out of the black uh schools that in our neighborhoods and they bust half of us over the eighth Thanos style but you have y'all going over there <laughs> Right here in the, in the neighborhood, so we ended up going uh, to the to a, to an all white school, and I ended up uh, I was in elementary, junior high school, all white. So, talent show comes. My sister forms she she forms a group with her friends. It's like five girls. They at home practicing. They all doing their little steps They're in the room. They they making up their little thing. We didn't call it choreography then. We said make up some steps. So he making up the steps. I wanted to be in the group. I said, I want to hey, ask my sister, can I get in the group? No, nah, get up out of here. You know and I'm like, okay. So I go tell mama, mama going to say something about this one. Mama, she want to let me in the group. Mama said, put him in the group. <laughs> so I go, so she's okay. She mad. My sister mad. She says to me, we was dancing to uh, uh, Ohio Players Roller Coaster. <laughs> say, so she said, but you only getting this part, which is the breakdown, when it go into the breakdown, I didn't do the step. I got to come out from the side of the stage when they did. So they do it. Now, the, the, the night the talent show happened, we go out. Now, it's, it's predominantly white folks out there. And we come and they do it. I'm on the side of the stage with my jeans rolled up, trying to look like a locker with my socks on. And I'm like, mm. so I'm seventh grade. I'm like 12 or so. <laughs> That part, that part comes. I'm, I comes out scooting like I said. Hey, I seen Slim and and Charles go by so trying to scoot out. So I came out. I'm get it, get it, I'm get it, get it, get it. Because of course, Mike Jackson did already did Dance Machine by the time. I'm get it, shut it up, get it. Crowd finish. Crowd goes off. Standing ovation. But my sister thinks the standing ovation is for her. What <laughs> 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 You know, I didn't, you know, I just, you know, again, so the, when we walk off stage, the principal says, because the people start saying, encore, encore. I, I don't know what encore mean at the time. And we said, what are they saying? I thought they were saying, you know, oh, y'all bad. Get y'all ass off the stage. <laughs> it's like, encore. And then they, the principal said, go perform again. So now, they we go back out. He's repeat the music. Now, they my sister. Do, 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 do. Uh, here come me scooting out again. The crowd goes crazy. I said, "Oh, this is for me." <laughs> oh yeah. Da, 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 da. So <laughs> come back to go. Uh, uh, you know, we get a get a we get a, a, a standard ovation. So the next day, we come back to school. So I'm walking down the hallway. And you know, and everybody start calling me. Oh my God, you're the mechanical boy. <laughs> I was doing the robot, and I, and, it, and I took it. I took it to heart. I'm going, what is the mechanical boy? I was really like upset. Like, it's not called a mechanical boy. Even my teachers were saying, Oh my God, and my name is Timothy. So they was going. They would call me Tim. Tim, do the mechanical boy. I don't know. I do the robot. Uh, uh, I do the robot. You know? So I, I was known at school as a mechanical boy for the two years I was at this junior high school. And and in the eighth grade, because it only went to the eighth grade, it was sixth, seventh, and eighth, no, seventh and eighth and ninth grade. No, seventh, eighth, and ninth, sorry. Those days, seventh, eighth, and ninth, tenth grade starts uh, high school. So I did a talent show from seventh grade, eighth grade, eighth grade, my sister, she um, then she left. Uh, and I formed my own group and every year we we would turn out because everybody would want to see me do the mechanical boy. Um, <laughs> and then in my ninth grade yearbook, I got it. Um, it says, uh, bet I won the best dancer, me and this girl named Charlene Jackson, who we still friends to this day. Best dancer at school, okay, it was a predominantly white school. So what? I still was good. Okay. Then it says, on the thing, it, under the where it's a caption it says under my picture says most likely to become a professional dancer, but I wanted to be a fireman, so I didn't. I, so dancing was dancing was just something we did at home, some you did with the family, friends. It never was a thing that I, I looked at as a professional. So 
uh, when I saw that writing, I was like, oh, that's cool, but you know, I want to be a fireman because I was intrigued when you know, go on a fire fireman, uh, go to firehouse trips, slide down a pole, slide into the boots, and you'd be like, this is cool because you you know you think you're Batman. <laughs> so nice. until until you until I actually saw real pictures. Of 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 uh, real bodies and bodies, I said nah. <laughs> but, so that was that was me about thirteen. Three years later, sixteen, I moved. We moved from from Fresno to Long Beach, California. Now Sam, my brother Boogaloo Sam, really was the best dancer in the out of the siblings. Sam is the second oldest. Sam, we have the same father, different mother. I have an older sister who has we have the same mother, different father. Sam is the second. Uh, from from uh, oldest from my father, so but Sam always been a, a great dancer. But he was very shy. Sam, I was shy, but Sam was extremely shy. Sam would we you know tell Sam to dance. He no, I don't want to dance. And, and, and often you know they, he would get trouble because you know they the parents want to show you off to to the grandmothers and great aunts and all this. So, but Sam always had this weird way of moving. Now. I'm not saying that I seen him doing boogaloo popping at that time. Now, Sam did the robot as well, uh, like I did, and was better than me, of course. But 16, I moved, we moved from Fresno to Long Beach. Um, Sam stayed back. Sam had just got out of the Marines. He went to the Marines when he was 17 or so, eight, almost 18. And I moved, because I'm three years younger than Sam. We go to Long Beach. Sam stays with his, his biological mom. I didn't see Sam for about you know a year almost. Sam called one day. Well, we would talk, but on the phone, of course. And he called. He said, "Man, I'm doing this uh, style called popping and boogling." I say, "On the phone now. This is before cell phones." I'm saying, "What is that?" He, I said, "What, what is popping? What is boogling? What is that?" And he was telling me about these, you know, scarecrow and all these things. I'm going. I said, "Well." But he started explaining to me over the phone, popping, you make your muscles jump, but you do it to the beat of the music and you got your arms. So I'm trying to interpret what this man is telling me. Oh, yeah, I'm 16, he's 19, I'm going, so I'm doing this on, on the phone, make your muscle jump. And I'm, what I'm saying to him, like I know, and was really going, whoa. But in my head, I was going, what the hell is this, this is, this don't seem like nothing. I said, well, what's Boogaloo? He said, you make you, 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 you isolate your body and you make your, your, your chest roll and your legs do rolls and stuff. So I'm doing pretty much this. I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that doesn't register. <laughs> so anyway, Sam said he'll come out to Long Beach visit in two weeks. Pick him up. First thing I did, I from the bus station, got back to the apartment, threw his bags in the room. Show me popping and boogaloo. So my head was like, because I already know what it looked like. <laughs> I had never not seen him. So he was like, he stood up. I said, I said, you see popping. So he was like, he looked at me and he did his head like this. And he started going there. Out my my whole mother effing chin hit the floor. <laughs> I said, what the hell? I had never seen someone move like that. And I was like, what the what? and I even grabbed his arm and was like, he was doing it. I said, man, how are you doing that? Then I said, well, let me see Boogaloo. I, again, <laughs> I got it down. Sam said, <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. I was like, my chin hit the damn floor again. <laughs> I said, what, what are you made out of? Rubber? What is that? How are you doing that? I had no clue. So, because a lot of people think, that I, you know, like they see me now or even back then, like, oh, Pete was this. I sucked. <laughs> I did not understand nothing. I could dance. I could 
robot. I can party dance, whatever latest party dances are. When I saw those two techniques that he did for me in 1978, this is April of 1978. Hmm. I had never seen. And robot and my roboting abilities didn't even want of any kind of help of me learning how to do this thing called popping and boogaloo. It was a totally different technique for me and the structure in my head. So so that's in 1978, I started learning. That that night or that day, I had to learn how to do this. I said, how to pop? He said, this is called, this was a thing for, people say it's Fresno. Fresno is a name of group teams that Sam and the original group from Fresno, Electronic Boogaloo Lockers. Those, that's the original group that started. Electric Boogaloo's, we're not the, we're not, we, we started the fact that we was on TV before them. But the Fresno crew, who I wasn't in, is the Electronic Boogaloo Locker. Electronic means the two dudes did the robot. Boogaloo was Sam doing popping and Boogaloo, and they had two dudes that was locking. So it was three, four different styles in the group. That's what they call Electronic Boogaloo. Boogaloo, not Boogaloo's. Boogaloo locker. Because Boogaloo also meant just getting down, especially in the South. That's what Boogaloo really means. So um, the, 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 so we, so Sam started teaching me, my little brother, Decky, um, and a couple of other people in the, in the apartment. Uh, uh, this dude named um, Chicken George. So, uh, <laughs> and, and, and then he started teaching me, oh, and jo uh, another dude named George down the street, and Daryl. Daryl is the guy, he was 13 when he turned, Sam was teaching him, then he, uh, when he turned 15, he, he created one of the, one of the, the styles that a lot of people know. Let me see, how should I put it? This, this pretty much 15 year old kid created snaking style, this. He created that style. Daryl is King Cobra. And he lived right down the street. He was, he was like, he just turned 14. He started doing his style. That's how he, he started teaching Pop and Taco, um, uh, George, and Kent. They became the mysterious poppers out of Long Beach. So, but here we are as there's me, my brother, little brother, Sam, a couple other people. We was just, it was like a family thing. Then how Robot Dane, Puppet Boozer, and Creepin' Sid got in the group later because uh, Puppet Boozer was, had a locking group because he was doing locking style. Robot Dane was, was, of course, locking and roboting, but they had heard of Sam. Sam named Priscilla. I mean, I didn't have a name. Was, I was just Sam's little brother. So Sam named went around Long Beach like wildfire. So everybody wanted to battle and challenge. We didn't ever say battling back then. That's a, for me, that came later. We said, you want to go against me? You want to get down? That's what, that's what we were saying. <laughs> so, um, so Robot Dane, and, and, and these are separate times, we're on our way to a house party. Robot Dane, or Dane Parker at the time, saw someone said, that's Sam right there. We go on, we walk on, come up, going to the house, to the house party. I see this guy with glasses on come up to Sam. You boogaloo Sam? And Sam said, yeah. He said, well, let's go. I'm going to go against you. So Sam said, okay. We're on the sidewalk in front of someone's house, going to the house party. <laughs> Sam, Dane, uh, bust out locking. He locking and, you know, trying to get down. And, and then he started doing a robot. And Sam looked at, I'm looking at Sam. Now, I don't have a name. I, I can't even do, barely can do the Fresno at the time. I'm not getting no circle. I'm not going against nobody. Sam, that's all of you. <laughs> Sam looks, looks at him, and I'm looking like, it is about to go down. And Sam started popping and boogling and doing all the stuff for me. Dane did exactly the reaction that I did. And Dane said something that was so profound or that he said, it, his words out of his mouth was, it is true. I'm going I'm, until later. He told me why he said it because he had heard so much about Sam mm -hmm. and and uh, over almost like 
over exaggeration because people had never seen it. So you're trying to explain this. So everybody thinks someone's over exaggerating about what they seen. So when they actually saw him, he said, oh, it is true. So the over, over exaggeration, how Sam moved was, wasn't that. It was, he actually can do what they said he can do. So, mm -hmm. or they tried to, you know, they were trying to explain that he was doing. So that's how they ain't got in the group. They ain't want to learn. Same thing, you know, short story, same thing happened to Public Boozer. He wanted to, he battled in the battle and uh, Sam, Sam turned him out. And, and he got, he wanted to learn. So that's how he got a group. Creepin' Sid, who did the, the, the tall guy, uh, um, Soul Train did the, the backslide. He was from Arkansas, could not dance a lick. Didn't have two left feet. I just made him, uh, he, he knew somebody in our apartments and he was just sitting on the steps and he was a basketball player. Again, he was same age as, he was a year older than me. I was, I just turned uh, 17 and you know, he was about to turn 18. And he asked me and, and his country twang, man, why they play basketball around here? And I, I was like, when I heard it, I'm like, where the hell are you from? Play around here. I said, well, they play at the elementary. We usually play at the, at the elementary school at the courts. So he had a basketball, we went, he said, what y'all do around here? I said, well, I said, me and my brothers, we, we, we dance, we, we do this. He teaches me this dance style called popping and boogalooing. I can, now I can do a little popping, you know, I can. So he said, let me see it. So I got up, we were sitting on the steps to the apartments. I got up, I'm doing, you know, them days. You know, you know, man, so it's this. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm talking as hard as the hell as I can. And his eyes was like, holy shit. I said, Wow, it sounded like this. I could, I, I was tripping. So, but in, long story short, he ended up, he was, he was just only in Long Beach for the summer because mom lived there. His father lived in, in Arkansas. He was out visiting his mom. We became, we became good friends. He wanted to, and he asked, me and him became close all this summer. So by the time for him to go, go back to Arkansas, go to school, we matched a plan to say, hey, you should live here, move here. So I asked my mother, can, cause my mother fell in love with him. My father, he became a brother. So we asked him, I mean, asked his mom, I asked my mom, my mom said, yeah, if it's okay with his mother. Went over to his mother's house, had a meeting or whatever. And she said, yes. So we called his father, father said, yes. So it wasn't an adoption, but my parents taking him in. He didn't move with his mother. He actually moved in with us wow. and he became, that's how, Creepin' Sid became the surrogate brother, and he started learning, but he still wasn't good. One day, uh, we had another member of the group who, who came up, Scarecrow, Scarecrow Scally. Scarecrow Scally didn't come to rehearsal. Sid had been watching us. Sam said, hey, man, Sid, we can just step right here for, um, you know, because we, we're doing a routine. We should learn a routine, but we have to have a body. Just, just, you know, I'll put you where you need to be. Uh, Creepin' Sid had been watching us all this time and knew the whole routine. We And he started doing a routine with us. And we going, what? He said, oh, I learned while I was watching you guys. Then he got down. We had never seen him pop. And he started getting down. We was like, what the hell? Dude, you sat there all this time watching us and learned <laughs> I was by myself in the bathroom or somewhere. And, Sam, and, and that day, Sam ended up putting Creepin' Sid in the group just because of that effort. That's how he got in. So wow. anyway, I know because it's so much, man. I, um, <laughs> let me skip up. Let me skip up. So okay. we doing, we doing now. We are group. Now we get a call to do, uh, you know, the 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 stuff from um, Crescendo's nightclub. The first time we ended up doing doing that, yes. And that's when I met, you know, you uh, Alpha Deputy. Yep. Um, man, who else? Lionel, big deal. Lionel. <laughs> man, I think I've met, uh, man, so, it's just so many dancers that we were in awe of because this is the first time I've seen, you know, me seeing you doing the alphas. I was like, and when we went back home trying to do your move and we was cracking knees and all kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so, but we, those, th that time we did that performance is a, really the first time a lot of people, even though we were doing stuff around Long Beach uh, here and there, you know, again, like Charles said, with, despite what people they think about electric boogaloo, they see us on Soul Train. We was a battle group. We was a, I was a, I was a battler. That's why I like my longest battle I had. Just like say like with 
uh, Charles said what he had with Skeet. I had this dude with this guy named uh, Tony from Long, Long Beach. We went, we went four songs. We, I was 16, wow. 15. <laughs> we went by four songs. We at a at a place called the Hutch in Long Beach. It was a direct yep. center. Yep, yep. direct center. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that was my that was my official first battle. And people said, "Pete, you won. No, oh, he won. Oh, you tied." So, I and I at, the, at this time I'm only still learning. I'm still trying to get get my bearings. I'm not, you know, I don't know a bunch of different moves. It's just how hard you can pop, and if you got some, if you got some, it's mostly your arm position, movement, trying to, you know, and at that time, I wasn't particularly into the boogaloo uh, style, because that was a little bit harder for me. Popping was more easy, that's why I gravitated towards that. So after that battle, I went to Sam said, I want to learn how to boogaloo and all this stuff, scarecrow, puppet. The guy with the Long Beach Poly High School, a year later, Poly High School had a homecoming. We go to the homecoming, and he and I get light, and then Charles can contest this. In those days, if you got turned out or whatever, or someone, you go back and practice. You go back and say, if I ever run into this person again, because there was no setup battles. It wasn't like, hey, we're going down here, and now let you do the circuit. But if you're on the streets, it's somebody seeing you, you want to get out, you're in a mall, you at a church, you at anywhere, you got to get busy. So, <laughs> The whole thing was when I when I walked into the school, he said, "You want to let's go? And we'll do it again." I said, "I'm I got oh dude, he don't know. I got repertoire, <laughs> man. I got I can boogaloo, I can tick, all that. So it's a yeah. big crowd, and it's the first time I heard uh, the dude had a box. He hit the song. <laughs> I thought I ever heard of, Aqua Boogie. I hadn't heard Aqua Boogie." So I'm going, what the hell is this? <laughs> what? And more, man. Oh, I took off. Every, most of the time I battle, I, I don't wait on nobody. I go. I took off. I'm just popping now. He comes out popping. He was good, you know, at the time in, in, the, in, the, in the, what we were doing, because, you know, uh, the level we was at. He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm popping a little harder than I was before. So he came. He went out. Then I went out. And I, when I came out the second time, I came out doing old man boogaloo rolls and stuff. And he, he, he looked like, and he, I remember he, and me and him were still friends to the day. He looked and looking at the crowd going, like, what the hell going on? So he came out again. He only popping, you know, he's still doing the popping. So I came out ticket. <laughs> and then he, he stopped. I stopped and he looked and he said, and this is the days. What I appreciate about those days, if you lost, you truly lost, you gave it up. You said he right. went like this, man, you got me, Pete. You got me, you got right. me this time. You got me this right. time. But next time, I'm going to practice. When you see me again, it's <laughs> mm -hmm. and just like Charles said, I've been saying this to people so many times. Even when he was talking about taking the hats off people, that's what we used to do. I, like I tell people now, they go, I said, man, back in the day, because oh, now they go, you touch, it's, it's disrespectful, man. We would, if we was dancing, popping, that's why our hands be doing all this. Because if I snatch your hat, I can, we used to throw your hats down and stomp them. That's, yeah. that's just a saying, I got you. That's, yeah. not, a, that's not a fight. That's not, and, and, and people know that. So you trying to get your hat taken, or you, if you get it taken, like some people will grab your hat, like, you know, and lock and roll, yeah. and put your yeah. hat put back on your head. So, because that's why I said a lot of people don't know that Sam battled. We have people, we had people come to our house, knock on our front doors, and ask our mother, uh, we're here to battle your 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 sons. And she said, they're in the garage practicing. Good luck. And slammed the door in their face. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that that's a misconception that everybody, because they see where, where oh, let's move on Soul Train. Let's keep doing movies. Mm -hmm. I am from the streets. That's all I knew. That's all I was in. Yeah, we, we gravitated towards doing shows and TV and movies, but at no at no given time, I was going from them from them movie sets back to East Side Long Beach to the hood. And when I went back to the hood, you can you couldn't just go off the fact that I was just on Soul Train. They said, Oh, now you're on Soul Train. I'ma still bring it to you harder now, cause now everybody gunning for you. So you still had to be on your shit. I mean, stuff. Sorry, y'all. You told me I have to curse about you. You can't give me Charles again. Charles, you like, <laughs> So, but, uh, now, 
And now this is the because this is so much. This is the how we became the electric boogaloo. This is a story that a lot of people don't know. We were still under. We will. We still went under the electronic boogaloo lockers because that was Sam' original group. So he started teaching us. We had a, uh, and this is I'll make this short. We one day I said to the group, "Hey man, let's go try to get on on TV. Let's go to Hollywood. We in Long Beach. Hollywood is not far. Let's." And we asked our parents, can we use the car? And they said, no, we had to get on the bus. So we, uh, it was me, Sam, Dane, Skeeter Rabbit wasn't in the group yet. He was just tagging along. He was the guy carrying the box. And he was, he was a security guard. So he was carrying the box. We got on the bus, taking us two hours from Long Beach to get down, get to, we try and get to Hollywood. And we, Sunset, to us, I'm from Fresno. All I know is Sunset, Hollywood, Beverly Hills, that's where you go to get famous. We got on the bus. And we see, we, whatever, we got, we've seen the map, but we're get to, and it said, sunset. Oh, that's sunset. So we are on this city bus, public bus. We turn, we turn on sunset. We said, oh, snap, sunset. So we push the, in them days, you know, the thing, pull the roof down, bus pulls over. We get out and we looking around. Oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on. This is looking a little hoodish. <laughs> this is, this is, this is sunset, and we look at the look at the street sign sunset. And we walking, and we see a limo. We start dancing in front of the limo. That could be a, a, <laughs> a funeral or a wedding. We don't know. So we walk into a store and ask someone, "Excuse me, is this Beverly Hills?" And the man said, "No, are you in East LA?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. But man, the, the most common thing to do is get back on the bus. Uh, we only had we had enough money to get back home. <laughs> so we walked from East LA, which was like we was pretty much by the five freeway. Walked from East LA all the way to Beverly Hills. Wow. It, man. it, it taken us about uh, almost two hours to get there. We yeah. were, we was walking, and we and the only way we knew is we we saw um, Wilshire, and 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 and, and we got oh, to Wilshire in Haiti. We saw the nine hundred uh, the building, the black building, but it says nine hundred still. I think it's still there, and that's how we we ended up going up in this building because we said, okay, now we just go up here and get discovered. So we start switching, looking at marquees, so and so agencies, some some agency. We push into, eh, uh, yes, yeah, we call let you, let you on the boogaloo rock. We trying to get a job. We want to sign with y'all? What do y'all do? We dancers. Why are we not doing dancers right now? Okay. So anyway, we somebody let us in. Finally, we got into a, a, a thing. We got we, we didn't get past the secretary. She we asked her and she said well, she she said two words to us that we we could not. Well, one word we didn't understand. Another word another word we couldn't produce. Do you guys have pictures and resume? <laughs> what, what is a, what's, what's a resume? What is a resume? <laughs> Sam, you know what a resume is? He said a resume. <laughs> we know what a picture is. Now, I don't have no picture, but we don't have no resume. Resume? What's a resume? <laughs> so, all oh, the things that you guys have done. Oh, we, we danced at, uh, at this park. Oh, no, no, we got to, uh, so, we didn't get through, and we got kind of discouraged, and we, we got to the bus stop. Now we're like, we got to go back home. We hungry. We went to Hamburger Hamlet. If anybody know about Hamburger Hamlet, back in the day, yeah. it's the expensive. <laughs> we went to eat. It's the first time. This is back in the day in 1978 when uh, when hamburgers was uh, 75 cent, and we went to Hamburger Hamlet, and their hamburgers was 2 dollars and 85 cent, and nobody paying them 2 dollars and 85 cent. We sat down <laughs> and we couldn't afford it, so we got the water, the waitress, we drank the water, and we snuck out like we like we did something wrong. And on our way back, <laughs> on our way back at the bus stop, we had we had enough money to go in the store and got two canned sodas and a bag of potato chips. So we sharing the canned sodas and chips because we chips because we had to get back home. We had enough money to get back home. We saw this white lady walking across out of the liquor store, and she saw us on the bus stop. And she said, "You guys, uh, you guys uh, here? Did y'all see Jeff Kutash? We was like, "Well, who is Jeff Kutash?" She said, "Oh, he's." We was, the bus bench was on the side of the building his office was in. We said, oh, no, we're going our way home. She said, you guys, because I had on Sam's original electronic boogaloo 
locker uniform from Fresno, some satin looking suit. I'm walking down the street looking like bat sink. So <laughs> here she said, What do you guys do? And I we Sam said we do a style called popping and boogum. And she said, Huh? I never heard of that. Said, Let me see it. So Sam said, Pete, sure. So I jumped off the bus bench. I'm like, can, can, can. she like, oh my God, oh my God, this is fantastic. Uh, uh, Jeff needs to see you guys. She gave her his business card. And that's how, now when we, we called him the Monday, they was audition, they was already doing a show called, called Dance uh, dance Class with Shabadoo. We went to the audition at Cornette Theater on, 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 on um, uh, where, by, the, by the Beverly Center. And it's still, that studio still there. We walked in. There is Shabadoo, Anna Sanchez, Steve Notario, and a bunch of other people that I didn't recognize. I recognized I recognized Shabadoo. Like we walked in, we was like, "Hey, that, that's that's the Shabadoo guy from the Lockers." And uh, and we did our performance. We auditioned for the show. The show was already in rehearsal. We auditioned. Je- Jeff Kutash like he he kind of didn't like what he seen because he was because he was like confused with electronic boogaloo. Lockers, like, and we did a locker routine. He said, "Y'all not really lockers, but uh, this other stuff is kind of intriguing." Shabadoo talked to him and told him, "Hey, man, this is this is some good stuff. I don't know, it's different." So they had a little powwow. They came. He said, "Y'all want to offer you guys a position in the show? Uh, you know, y'all be especially acting the show, doing you know, doing this one performance." We were like excited. Oh heck yeah! Then he went, "But you guys' name is too long." And besides, y'all not lockers. Electronic boogaloo lockers. Nah, he said, he went, Jeff Kutash did just like this. Hmm. Electric boogaloo. And we all look at Sam because it's Sam group. We go, Sam was like, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So we, so it wasn't us who named us electric boogaloo. It was Jeff Kutash, a white Jewish man, said, yeah. Jeff, and he said electric boogaloo, not boogaloos. We was electric boogaloo. We was just it, plural, nothing else to it. <laughs> that, in 1978, that's when we became electric boogaloo, and that, and that was in September of 1978. And uh, and just to say, this is my last, it's, um, you know, we, I, uh, I can read but they, they gave us a contract. He offered us a contract that day and told us, you guys will be making four hundred and fifty dollars for the performance each. We was like, "Say what?" <laughs> <laughs> but we was making four hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's what we was making. Our first gig was four hundred, and we signed the contract because and. And my, I looked at it, I, this is what I said on the outside of the theater. We all jumped. We happy still. We said, I said, I looked at Sam. I said, look, I ain't got to work at McDonald's because McDonald's at the time was $1.20 an hour. Part time, I'm only making about a hundred and some dollars a month because I'm going to school. So $450 a month, I'm cracking. I'm, I got money. Not a fail. <laughs> That when we did get the job and 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 went and did the gig, we had to pay for our own lodging, which taken it was a uh, it was a uh, six hundred dollars a month for the lodging, hundred dollars come out of your check, that's after taxes. So after taxes, we got two hundred and some dollars. So a hundred, I got a hundred and something. Now I gotta eat, so I end up every month with. $82. I came home broke. <laughs> but I came home satisfied with the fact that we did our per- first performances and got a standing ovation. That is my story. I'll continue it later because there's so much more getting up to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we could we could be here. Hey, we could be here to next Sunday telling stories. <laughs> so, we be done. Exactly. That is fantastic. Oh my God. You know, I just heard some stuff that I had never ever heard and I never knew about. Yeah. Wow. That's what's so exciting about, if I haven't heard about it, and I started dancing, you know, professionally in 72, you know, so, and, and I haven't heard that story or anything about some of the stuff 
And I didn't know that Jeff, you know, I know Jeff Kutash really well. So I had no idea that he named you guys. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, uh, this is very interesting. Yeah. Very. Thank you for that. No, you're welcome. Thank, thank you. I, you know, I, I've learned a lot today. A lot. <laughs> every every week I learned something. I learned a lot about Figure Pop, you know, last week and, and a Buddhist stretch. I, you know, and I learned stuff about uh, Scooby that, and he's my best friend. And I, I know that when he told his story. So, so every week, if I'm learning, Things, that means that everybody else out there listening is learning more so because I know some stuff. So that's what's important that that you guys are telling the story, not for me but for for everyone that's listening. And um, we have about another twenty minutes. And what I like to do at this at this time is like have you guys uh, like you can ask each other because I'm quite sure there's questions that that you want to know from one of the other guys that that uh, you know that they were talking. It, at this time, so we can. I, I'll start with Cass. Is it something that you want to ask someone? I mean, I can start with, with with Charles because again, I'm just learning the stuff with him. And Pete and I have been in a group together for six plus years or so. Yeah. But I still just learned something right now that I didn't know. Um, <laughs> um, but with Charles, again, and the whole so, how did you? Um, how did they find you with the Soul Train thing? When, when did you? first come to the Soul Train, who found you and said, oh, go down to Soul Train and do, how did that come about? Did you excuse, know? excuse me, gentlemen, I'm sorry. Give, give me one second, I'm sorry. Somebody's yeah. knocking on my door. Go okay. ahead. No, uh, but you guys can continue the discussion, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Oh yeah, I had a, you know, I had a friend of mine, uh, she used to always, you know, we, we did a lot of, because I was, I was young, I, went, I couldn't get to the clubs and nothing like that at that time. So what, one of our hangout spots was a place called Eve at the Door. Yep. And yep. Uh, before then, uh, they, had a, they had a DJ up there called Dr. Rock. So Dr. Rock, would, he would be, he, I mean, he would, turn, he would turn it out. And, uh, right. you know, first rap song came out, then Curtis Blow. I mean, that rap song stayed out for about a year. That's the breaks. I mean, you know, right. we just, oh, man, that, that was the song. So Dr. Rock wound up getting a, a gig in Houston to be on the radio. So uh, DJ Yellow, he went to Compton High. He was a year younger than I was. And then and then Dre, he went to Centennial. And they were kind of battle rivalries at that time. So Lonzo needed a, a couple of DJs because Lonzo was a DJ and this other DJ called DJ Unknown. Yep. So uh, when Dr. Rock got, I mean, when uh, Dr. Dre got there, uh, Lonzo was like, you know, take over that name. You could be Dr. Dre. So this is how Dr. Dre got his name. Wow. So we, we, we was up there, and we we kept Eve at the dark popping. I mean, we we was like, man, he, one day he, 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 we had a battle against Anthony King and Greg. Right. And he announced it over the radio. And uh, we was regulars at Eve at the dark. I mean, you can go up there and catch us, you know, if you wanted to find out with Captain Crunch and Funky Bunch, we, that, that was up. Uh, we was there. Exactly. So one time he announced it, and he had a line around the corner. It, no, it was a club, but it wasn't a, a big club, but everybody wanted to see us battle, you know, at that time. So we was like, boom. To make a long story short, we were, you know, going from hotel to hotels. Like I said, Alpine Village, the convention center, the, uh, the Bonaventure Hotel, everywhere. So we could, we was too young to get into nightclubs, but 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 that was our stopping ground was Eve at the dark. So I had a friend, she was like, Charles, you should she was on Soul Train. She was like, Oh, you got you gotta come to Soul Train because people with popping that just came out, there was some people on Soul Train that she would laugh and like, man, they don't know what they're doing. You just should come up there. So she invited me. And now when I went, I'm you know, seeing everybody. But I was already a big fan of Soul Train. When I seen Lockers, right. uh, not to make a long story short, uh, I, I got my style and energy on Greg Pope. Greg, to me, even though Flutie was so smooth, and locking is so technique, is that when you go into one move, you got to know how to get out of that move to transition to another move to make you look like you're dancing. See, a lot of dancers, these days, they locking, but they, they can hit a move but they don't know how to get out that mood to go to another mood. It's like a boxer. 
You got to right. have a combination. Bam, bam, boom, boom. And you got to know how to get out in combination without looking like you are don't know what you're doing. And so right. these days, when I see lockers locking, I see them stumbling because they don't know how to transition out of one mood to the next mood to set up that mood to get into that mood. So right. I learned that this is the way you lock. You have to go from one mood to the next mood. And I studied Greg because always seeing Greg, he never hesitated on none of his moves, right? Like sometimes Shabba hesitate, a fluty, and just Don himself was so raw that he would take, I call challenging. He challenged himself. See, he didn't challenge other people. Don would challenge himself to do things that I seen Don do some moves. I said, damn. I, 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 I can't even imagine to do these things that Don, would, Don Campbell would doing, right. because he would do it and he couldn't even do it himself again. He would like, and that's when I got to a point, like some things I would do as far as locking, I would challenge myself more so at rehearsal than I would do on the stage that we perform on. So our rehearsal was battleground. I mean, we would be in, in the garage and it'd be a hundred degrees. And we and we'll be dancing so hard and sweating. Then I was at that time making a lot of shut. I was that time. I was a little playboy, right? <laughs> and girls would come over doing our rehearsal, and it's hot. We up here rehearsal. We two hours in. Hey, Gary, y'all hold down. Somebody just came by. I'll go in a room, knock boots. <laughs> I'm back to <at> rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be like, dog, what are you doing, you man? Home with that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, <laughs> look, but this is how much energy I had, right? So I'm up here, I'm up here dancing in the middle of rehearsal, go and make love to come back to rehearsal, because that's how much we rehearsed. We didn't even have time to have true relationship because we we fell in love with dancing. We fell in love with dancing so much that. Our um, dancing was our, our, our yeah. dancing was our women's. Okay, so <laughs> we only have ten more minutes, and I gotta. Okay. Go. I apologize, my brother. We okay, got, well, I got ten more minutes to, to, to with everyone else. Okay, I'll, go ahead, wrap it up. I, I just wanted to get that. That's how I got on Soul Train with a friend of mine. She just <laughs> wanted us to get you know uh, to get into that. You went, you went to Chicago and back and got on Soul Train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's okay. It was all good. I love it. I love it. Okay. So now, since you just said that, why don't you ask someone a question? <laughs> all right. All right, Pete. Now, yes. me and Pete, we we uh, we go back a long long ways, but we go back seventy eight, seventy nine. Right. And uh, like I said, we talked to Ski. I uh, talked about Ski, and. Uh, I know how bad Ski wanted to be a part of y'all group because he always wanted to be a part of a group. Right. Because at that time, it was, like I said, it was just Ski and uh, Lil' Reggie. Yeah. And so, and he wanted to learn how to boogaloo so bad because he thought right. that would take it to another level. Just tell right. us how that you you guys incorporated uh, Pop and Pete into you guys' group. Oh, I mean Ski? I mean, uh, Ski the Rabbit. Yeah, Ski the Rabbit. Uh, uh, Ski got in the, um, <laughs> Ski, you know, of course, we had the rehearsals. Ski could not, I mean, of course, great at locking and roboting. He just couldn't, for his, his pumping and boogaloo wasn't up on that thing. So Sam would never, like, oh, you in a group. So he was almost like, like, you're a stepchild group member in a sense. But, and the only thing that Ski can do is the, Twistle flex. He would do a twistle flex eight hundred thousand times. Get who you? Oh about. yeah. <laughs> so one day, um, and he, you know, of course, like like creeping Sid, you know, did uh, ski rabbit star. We know practicing the web because he was ski was living in Southgate at the time, and he would come back and forth live, and come and live with us, stay with us. And one day he came and was getting down. This is the time we was doing the me robot day was doing the Playboy Club. Uh, Century City, and this is 81. And we did it again in 82. Ski practiced so hard that he, I had to put him, because it was like the group had dismantled. The original Electric Boogaloo's, we, it was only me and Robot Dane left. So I put Ski in, and then became me, Ski, and, 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 and Dane. And then I put my little brother, Decky, in officially, even though Decky has been a party, you know, and then a friend named Lonnie, and then we became like the third generation of, 
of the electric boogaloo. That's how Ski got in. Ski got in because I just saw the the, the growth. Like Ski was, like you said, Ski was uh, this person. He was very competitive, very you know determined, and 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 I saw that and that he 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 just grew. And we and then me him me him and Robot Dane did the Playboy Club. In eighty and eighty two, and that's how he just stayed in the in and out, you know, group. And then we became the the group that became official. I mean, the second wave, which is in in ninety seven. Me, Sugar Pop, Mr. Wiggles, Peter Rabbit, Sam, uh, uh, and Papa Taco. That that's that's this is the longest running group. That's this is twenty two years. The original Electric Boogaloo's was only a year and a half. That was it. Yeah. So that's how Ski got a group. Fantastic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask Andrew um, a, a question. Um, so yeah, your uh, the group that you 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 have to is the Hood Lockers, right? Yes. Yeah. The so hood are you guys performing uh, uh, anywhere? Or are you guys uh, what are you guys doing now? Or it was just it, or is it a group that that's just teaching now? So I to um, we're doing <clears throat> we're doing uh, sharing teaching. Um, uh, before the uh, the pandemic, uh, we were actually on tour with Rennie Harris Pure Movement, uh, performing in, in a show called Functified. Um, that show had been running for about maybe two years uh, up until uh, the pandemic. Um, uh, so, you know, other than that, we've been teaching, uh, performing locally, um, and also battling locally, and we've done some battles internationally. Uh, we actually also had an opportunity to uh, portray the original Lockers on American Soul this season. Oh, uh, yeah, it was dope. actually yeah, yeah that's that, right. that, that was dope. Yeah, yeah that was, that's right. Thank you. That's Thank right. You. Very good. So I, you know, we, I've been saving up my uh, my episodes to watch them all at once, like I did the last season. So I haven't really watched any, but I saw clips, and I forgot that 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 uh, I did see something on Facebook that uh, of the guys. So that's the group that you're in. Yeah, the Hood Lockers. Yes, that's correct. Oh. And actually, one of the guy, one of our new members, we actually met on set there. His name is uh, Lamont Chapman. Construct. Uh, see? He's been locking uh, down in Tennessee, where he's from. Um, Let's see so. if I wouldn't have asked that question. We would have never known that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, so it's good. Okay, I'm really so, bad at talking about myself, so you have to. You have no, to no, 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 no. That's good. <laughs> that's why. That's why I asked. And now, but I, I need to choose because I, I don't like to. I'm, I'm like done with answering questions for myself. So I need to choose one of you guys, either Pop and Pete, or, <clears throat> or Charles, to ask Casper a question. Okay. Well, I'll do. It. Hey. So I mean, for for one, I know because Casper is just one of the most modest. You know, guys that I've known and humbled yes. as hell. You know, and and it throughout these years of people, you know, trying to discredit him of teaching Michael the the backslide, and you know, many I got a many arguments with with people who was believing otherwise, and they was you know, uh, this this who who taught him? He Michael learned himself. I'm not nah, man. I know personally know the guy, lived with the guy. We ate together. We we had uh, uh beans and rice over toast and <laughs> everything else together. So <laughs> exactly. So my whole thing is, you know, how, you know, Casper, I mean, through all those years of, you know, people, I mean, people, you know, I mean, making you making YouTube clips and doing this and that. How did you feel? I mean, how, how did that make you feel, man? You know, because it, it rubbed me the wrong way. I want, I, I, you know, I'm not a violent person. I'm not nowhere near, but I want to, I want to fight. <laughs> I want to fight because of that. Dude. Well, I mean, you know, like it's been, like you said, there's been so many people that have that have gone down that road, mm -hmm. and um, the very, very first time it happened, and especially when it happens with someone that you know and was close to, who started yeah. making claims. Um, it just hurt you know, the first time because then you, you know they did something um, and they knew better and it was intentional mm -hmm. and they knew. I said, it was like, why would you? Okay. And then I took on the mentality, I had to take on the mentality that one, well, one day all will be known. At the end of the day, truth will eventually find its way out. Yeah. And it will be that, you know, and then whatever everyone else has said won't matter. 
And so that's the way, that's the mentality I had to take and just like, you know, keep my own peace, just keep moving in life, keep doing my thing, and the truth will one day find its way out. So, and again, they, they've been working on the script and doing all this stuff about the life story for a while now, which was pretty close to doing before this pandemic. I'm sorry, did I say pandemic? Yeah, yeah. Um, Plantation, it's all the same. Plant, yeah. Plant, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's all, um, we all like stay at home. The ball game, but, but uh, <laughs> that one day this turns into a film like they're hoping it will, then it'll all be seen. It'll all be known just how it happened. Um, and the, when you look at this kid from Santa Ana who admired Michael, imitated Michael, did all this, suddenly he's in his presence and he's teaching him. You know, that, that's a Cinderella story, you know, and that can't be taken no matter what anyone says um, at the end of the day. I know many people and people that know me know it, and I said, maybe one day the world will, and it's time they will. And things like this, like I was producing, that again, it just helps to say, you know, everyone's story, because um, everyone here has a history, and we're all connected in that sense, you know, we share the love of dance, and, and our stories again that they're, they're you know amazing to hear and i'm amazed by hearing the stories i've heard today knowing you guys as long as i have so i figured that one day my story will come out when it's supposed to come out that's Thank basically you. how i how i live fantastic amen yes that's very 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 fantastic you know um we have um, less than five minutes to go and i just want to uh, to thank you guys you know um you know, I've been an admirer of, of three of you guys. I, I just, now I'm an admirer of one more. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I, I um, you know, so, and being a, a, a professional dancer myself, and everyone knows that um, in, in my style of dance is, is so different. I always, I never call myself like the uh, locker locker. I was, cause I, I started dancing in Louisiana and, and when I came to California, I put, I learned, I used to hang out with, with the locker. I mean, that's, we, we grew up together, you know, all of us, we, from Demeter to all of us, we were the people before there was a locker group. We all went to contests together and, and everything. Greg lived downstairs from me and, and, uh, and Rerun and Greg lived together. It was in the same, we all lived in the same building, you know, so. Wow. I mean, so oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. yeah, because I, I, we, and it, you know, the weirdest thing is, uh, I had moved to this building in Hollywood. It was called Camelot Street. And, and <laughs> wow. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and then, so I was telling Greg about it, and we run, and uh, they, they both moved, they were roommates, you know. And uh, the, the, the biggest thing about this whole thing, I'm going to just say it real quick, uh, my memories from that, I, I probably said it before, is that, you know, um, I don't, I don't drink, or get high or do drugs or anything, but I had just moved into this building and, and a lot of my friends came over and they, they had like beer and this and, and, I, and I actually participated that night for the last time in my life and I was only 19. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so dizzy and I had a water bed, right? So I tried to sleep, you know, and I'm like rocking. <laughs> so the next day I, I was throwing off the mattress and, and uh, Greg said, we'll take it. And so I, I, I took the mattress down. I bought a regular mattress and sit it into my box, you know, how they used to wear yeah. water beds, and sat it in their regular mattress. And I gave them the bed. And, <laughs> and we all went out. But they put a hose. And I, I wasn't aware of what they did, but we all, we all used to come go to contests together. They put a hose in, in through the window in the, in the, you know, from the outside. And they were putting water in the water bed. Right, wow. mm. but it was, and it wasn't a bed; it was just a mattress in the living room. And I got home before them, and it was like I peeped in because I saw water because we go down, and the water was coming down like this out of out of their apartment. So, so I ran upstairs and I saw the hose still in there. So I ran and turned it off and I pulled the holes back, but I couldn't get in there to to do anything else. And and when they, dude, we laughed about that for years and years. <laughs> And flooded the house. Wow. <laughs> so that's my wow. story about, about those guys. But we but my locking style is totally different. And I, you know, I have no shame of it. I love the way I dance. I, I made a good dance career of it. But I, yeah. I know 
I don't, I didn't ever dance like, like them and I could have, but then I was so used to the way I did and I was winning contests the way I danced. I just, I, I just take it as, um, as locking the way that I, I, I learned all the fundamentals, but I just kind of like basic the way I wanted to. And when I met Casper, we were in the second generation of the lockers when I, uh, and, and that's when I met Casper and Cooley uh, and, and, uh, and stuff. And that's, that's when he mentioned lockers. Uh, that's when we, Greg and Tony Gogo and Slim and, and Deputy and Stan the Man, we were all traveling everywhere as, as the lockers, just like all the other groups. You know, you yeah. have seven generations and da 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 da. But that's all I wanted to say about that. But I wanted to thank you guys so much. But can I say one thing? Yes, sir. Thing, I mean, I'm going to say it quick. This is just giving admiration. No, no, you take your time. But look, th this is what I want to say to, to, my, to my brother Charles Washington, known as, you know, Captain Crunch, man. You know, a lot of people, you know, out here in this world don't know uh, the people that's, that was in the beginning or shortly after. Yeah, and he, he's, I'm talking about, you know, he's there, he's from the, with the locking, then he, then he transcends into to the popping and boogling and doing everything. But people have have not given his, his due propers, man. For me, when I saw him actually I mean, he was popping. He caught my attention because he was one of the one of the guys in doing it that had. When I say own feeling, people say style. I say feeling. Because style is something that I look at. If you have the foundation, like doing locking, you can have your own feeling inside of locking. But as long as you got the, the technique down, my thing is his signature, his feel, how he did it, how he approached it. Uh, he popped with power. He popped with finesse. He popped with funkiness. He, uh, everything he did had a, it was a bounce. Now, and, and a lot of people didn't know that. And a lot of people in these days don't know, don't do it of that caliber. You know, it's, I mean, it's great dancers now as it was back then. But for him, he needs to be, he needs to, his name needs to be said in the same, in, in the reference as mine, as Sam's. When I'm saying it in a sense of, he's a, he's a pioneer. He's a trailblazer. He helped build what, what, especially L.A., Compton, uh, Long, we all mended, we all crossed paths. So my, my, I, I can't thank him enough to be, and, and, and he's probably one of the only, he don't even know this, I'm about to say it. He's probably the only, back then, the only person I probably, that's when me and him never battled, because I was like, man, that's that. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so, because my respect for him, and I know he can get busy. So, and he had, like he said, he had arsenal. It was people who can dance and people who can do what they do. Then people who can dance and have arsenals. And he had a lot of arsenals that I, you know, I would have to dig out of bags and all kinds of things. <laughs> so Charles, AKA Captain Crunch, bro, love you, man. Uh, you know, our last time I seen you was at Skeet's funeral. We hugged out, you know, uh, my respect for you has yeah. always been on a high and, and, and I'm always going to, uh, big you up. I don't care. I've done it. I put you on my, uh, I had to let people know on my page, this dude right here, he's a legend. This, and don't sleep on him. Y'all should know who the hell his, he is and his group is. So That's thank right. you. Uh, uh, That's it's right. That, hey, hey, the same right. for you. I mean, the same with, the, like I said, electric boogaloos for street dancing, you guys, man, y'all took it to a, okay, y'all took street dancing where the locking was dying down. Y'all took, y'all brought street dancing alive to another level, you know what I mean? Because thousands of people around the world wanted to learn how to pop lock, you know? And for, and not thousands, but millions of people really wanted to know this brand new dance. And, and you guys kept street dancing alive, where breaking came about, hip hop came about. And it was just, you know, like I said, all the respect that we had for each other dancing was remarkable. And I just wanted to say to uh, uh, Alpha, you know, like everybody, what made the locker so unique is that none of them was the same. All of them had different styles. Right. And you had the best ground movement. The, yep. the, you had the energy. You had, you know how to get into your moves. You know how to get out your moves. It wasn't just a locker. You had a style that nobody can duplicate. And yep. so that, that in itself is so remarkable when nobody can duplicate you. And, and so... That's what makes a great dancer. See, a lot of people could duplicate a lot of people. Just like, just like Pop and Pete, nobody can duplicate you. That's what made you different and made, you know, you <laughs> remarkable as, as, a, as a dancer. 
So, you know, any, anybody can copy everybody, but when nobody can duplicate you, that means you, you have done your work uh, making your style your own. And e even like when Casper, you and Cooley, I mean, Cooley and Casper, I mean, you guys, it was like around the world. People knew you. I, you know, we never met head up yeah. uh, uh, as far as dancing because y'all right. was in Orange County. We was down in Compton and L.A. Right. And, uh, and so you, I always, always heard good things about you guys, you know, as far as you guys putting it down. Your routines was always tight. You was always the timing. Every, all your timing mechanism was always, like, on time, you know. And that was a good thing that I saw in, in you guys dancing. The timing was perfecting it, perfecting it. No, no, yes. for sure. yes. Thank you, thank you. So, Cass, uh, your last words, Cass? I was just, you know, jump on what they were saying, like with, with Charles, and, and there's very, very few people that you meet in the circuit or see around that had OG style. You know, everybody came in with their generation just trying to pop or try to do this, but when you, when you would out of nowhere see someone and they got OG style, know how to flow, know how to hit, know how to do all that stuff, they always stand out. So when you... When I first saw you on Soul Train and saw that, again, hearing about you way before any of that, Captain Crunch and the Funky Brush. I heard from Jeffrey Daniel was the first one that told me about you guys. And he was like, no, I never heard of them. He said, yeah. And so, so he schooled me up, but I never knew who you were until this very day is the first time I'm knowing that this is the Captain Crunch and the Funky Brush <laughs> I've been about for years, even though I had seen you and just didn't know that was you because you stood out as one of those OG guys that I said, dude's got oh, the energy was off the chart, always been off the chart, 110 percent. But mm -hmm. the style to go with the energy, that's a whole different, a whole different deal. And I was like, man, now I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, feel honored here to be like, okay, so I know what <laughs> the OGs from that. Now it all makes sense why they, your name was as big as it was because you're OG with it. And so not many people can walk with that, uh, with that uh, behind their, their name basically, and, and back it up. So anyway. Anyway, it's a pleasure talking to you on this on this deal here. Oh, same here. Uh, hey, uh, Alpha, I just wanted I just wanted to tell you I really appreciate this forum because there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot yeah. of people call right. themselves OG, and to me, it's just a lot of people that's old. They ain't right. got the G because they ain't got <laughs> what it is. So right. you know, so when I go to these uh, these seminars and these people, oh yeah, I did this and I did this, and I'm up here like I never heard of you, right. and because when you a dancer, you know who was putting it down because your name resonated throughout the cities, the towns. So I know who was OG. I knew the names of all the great dancers and where they came from, what city they was representing. So a lot of people out here is faking the funk. Y'all just keep it real. And, uh, you know, don't say you're OG. Just say you was in the game. Because to be an OG <laughs> is having your own original style that right. you uh, contribute to dancing. And if you ain't contribute your own style to dance, and you ain't an OG. You were just part of the game. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Well, Fantastic. I got, got one more, one more last words. Andrew, uh, your last words, sir. Oh, oh man. We went Thank over, you. So, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, I've learned a, a tremendous amount. Um, you know, this is one, one of these talks have, uh, has been um, one of the things that's been on my bucket list. Uh, in terms of like uh, wanting to connect with older dancers uh, from older generations um, and just kind of, I guess, getting confirmation on, on, on how I feel and, and the things that I've, that I've gone through. And, you know, so, you know, I've watched all you guys uh, my entire life. Um, so, you know, it's just an honor to just be in this discussion with you guys. And thank you. No, it's, it's, it's hey, uh, Alpha, hey, Alpha, I just want to say one thing to, uh, my man just was talking right there, Andrew. Yes. Uh, the key sometimes, like, just to be a popper, you can't, you can't learn really how to pop until you like pop to lock it, uh, pop lock and music, and even locking too. Go back to the basis of locking music. I can give you some music like, just like like the uh, Mighty Mighty by uh, Earth Wind and Fire, Unfinished Ooh. Business by uh, 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 Donald Bird and the Blackbird. Uh, so you got. Go back to Disco Connection. Go back to all these songs that lockers really lock to. You'll find your own groove in there because it's hard to lock to music, just music, because it yes, doesn't sir. fit the style. So yes. this will give you advantage going back to listen to some old school uh, uh, music by, you know, the lockers that we lock to. 
And so, you know, if you, you want to hit me up, I'll give you some more, some more music that you can really get that, that whole funky groove off of. And then once you got locked in, you can dance to anything, but learn the basic off locking music. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. 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 Yeah, that's, that's definitely. And Charles is the person that, you know, when it comes down to knowing what's happening, <laughs> Charles would find stuff that uh, on Soul Train that, that I don't remember doing. And he said, yeah, he put it up on, on Facebook. I'm going like, how do you remember doing that? <laughs> and he's found it and, and posted it because, you know, th that's, uh, that's Charles. He, he's not always thinking about just himself. He's, he, if you know him, you know him to think about everyone. He's not the, not the selfish person whatsoever. He, he's a given person. And, and that's why he's the first guy from that, from the era uh, from Soul Train that, that has been on. I mean, other than like uh, Scooby uh, and, 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 you know, has been on. So, so that's why I was supposed to have a lot of Soul Train dancers, but I, I, I chose, I chose the, 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 the master of the, my memories whenever I look at the, uh, the energy that you had, you know, mm. with that long yeah. uh, uh, Jericho. Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> that Jericho was all over the place. <laughs> hey, but yeah, you know what? My thing was, I love locking so much, and even though popping was up and coming, that I wanted to keep locking alive on Soul Train. I mean, I could have, you know, converted to to you know breaking and doing other things, but uh, locking is so unique that too many people can't do it, and yeah. and yeah. so therefore I, I wanted to keep keep uh, to bridge that from 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 that era of locking going into popping into breaking into hip hop. So our, our conscience was, look, let's keep locking alive. And because it would have faded out. Believe me, if we didn't do it on Soul Train, it would have faded out. You wouldn't have seen so many locking moves. So we mm -hmm. made sure that the generation that was coming up, that they was gonna see some real hard locking on Soul Train, you know, what just gonna be just popping or, or breaking. So we, that's, that was our initiative. To, well, you to keep locking, keep that. locking alive. You did a great job of that. And, and uh, like the weeks coming, like I was saying, uh, I think it's the, the, the first and the eighth, it's going to be dancers. They've been, no one really stopped locking uh, mainly, especially uh, like uh, in other countries. I mean, it, locking is so huge because I've been traveling for the last five years, judging and, and stuff like that in contests. It's so many lockers out there. It kind of it, mm -hmm. it laid uh, back here in America, but other countries, and you're going to see that because I'm going to show clips of a of, uh, dancers from other countries when they come on because like next week we'll have ladies and then the next week it's going to be guys so okay uh, but i gotta say goodbye to you guys but I, and pete pete uh probably got tired of uh, uh sitting there <laughs> but, uh, and he and he deserted us but we love you anyways pete <laughs> Pop and pete, Pop and pete. Pop and yeah pete. <laughs> so thank you guys i really appreciate it and um, thank you uh, you guys made this a very, very interesting uh, day for me as, as all of the, every time someone comes on, I hear stuff that I haven't heard. So it's a big learning curve for me as well as all the people that, that listen to us, okay? Thank you so much. And Thank you guys you have also. a great day. And my, always my last words is, all right, wear, Cass. okay, all wear right. a mask. No. Oh yeah, for sure, for no. sure. Stay and safe. Lives matter. That's right. <laughs> yes, all right, right. guys. Thank you, so pleasure. thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try to All connect right. with everybody on social media. All right, Peace. Andrew. All right, for sure. I All right, brothers. All right. All right, um, we're, we're, we're actually out of here as of right now. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>